Kansas State. Down four. Got to go quick. The Wildcats looking for a rally. That's Carter for three. He's got it. Big shot. Not over yet. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. Hawkins keys one up from three. Picked up Newton inside. Back and forth it goes. Pinballed around. Hawkins took it. Good. Big time hit. 365 Sports is presented by IdealMRI.com. High quality MRIs for $497 or less. IdealMRI.com. Your health is important, so is your budget. San Diego State looking for the win. Butler, get it in. A rope, hands it to Trammell. Three seconds, two seconds. Trammell drives. He's fouled. 365 Sports is also brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, protecting Texans since 1952. He's got a mismatch with Allen if he wants it. He's got Pack. He's got him. Give it to him. Marlowe keeps it instead. Look at the ball taken away by the Hurricanes Poplar. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Search 365 Sports on YouTube. Brought to you by TFNB, your bank for life. Kansas State now needs a three to tie it. Clock ticks. Noel dribbles. He's looking for someone. Masood got to put it up. And that's it. The Owls of Florida Atlantic. Now here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. It's a Friday afternoon. It's the final four weekend for both the men and the women. Women tonight, men tomorrow. Championships on Sunday and also Monday. We'll have some basketball coaching news. A player in the Big 12 who had a big impact on Kansas has declared for the NBA draft. A few notes about the Pac-12. And Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports, who spoke with President Dobbins at Arizona, will join us today at 4.30. A lot of that to get to. A couple of notes, a trend from the opening day of Major League Baseball. Max Olson, Grayson Grunhafer, Eric Nelson, who's the vice president of Catalytic Ministries, a part of Athletes in Action, on Scott Drew tomorrow getting that John Wooden Award. And then also, again, Evan Weiner will join us, a longtime author, journalist, and Paul's top five. We are very busy today. Let's start with this. Today, uh, as he's getting on a flight, headed to Lubbock, North Texas NIT championship coach uh, Grant McCaslin, a six-year, $18 million contract, former Tech and Baylor assistant coach. And then there's that note with Ross Hodge, who will be the replacement for Grant McCaslin. Not sure if that's been made official, but this makes it as official as you can get. Here's Grant McCaslin boarding an airplane. No, we can't use it. Okay, we can't use it. He basically said, let's go win some championships, wreck them, got on a flight, and it was headed to Lubbock, Texas. Good for him. Yeah, he'll do great there. And Scott Drew's tree, um, you know, the well, it, it's now like uh, like spreading like a crop, actually. It's, it's probably more than that because it's all over the Big 12 now. Three of the 12 coaches will be Scott Drew or, you know, former Scott Drew assistants. And um, I, I'm, I'm sure he's thanking his lucky stars that – Paul Mills went to Wichita State and not, um, you know, another open Big 12 job. That, well, I guess there's not one that popped up. But, man, um, you know, Matt Driscoll's out there somewhere. And if he has a couple good runs with North Florida, I'm sure, um, you know, somebody might give him a call. So it's, it is, um, it's, it's really great to see for those guys. It probably stinks a little bit for Baylor. Although, uh, if I'm Mac Rhodes, I'm going to start charging Kirby Hocutt, like, fees for, Commission. Yeah. for developing coaches for him, I guess. But... Uh, yeah, it's great for Grant. He's going to do a great job there. Um, you know, Scott well, they, they won last night. They beat UAB for the NIT championship. Uh, and what a way to end his run. And as I mentioned, Craig, yesterday, I saw a couple of North Texas fans saying that he's the best coach that North Texas has ever had. And, uh, and good for him. He's now taking advantage of this opportunity. Yeah, I mean, that was uh, certainly an exciting moment for them last night. Uh, for UNT fans, they don't get, uh, you know, a ton to celebrate that is national, I guess. And uh, you had eyes on the NIT last night as, you know, we have the the last, you know, parts of basketball before it wraps up here in the next few days. Uh, but, yeah, they had a great team. 
um, had a tremendous run there at North Texas and capped it off with a tournament victory and some history and some excitement. And so he leaves them in a much better place than when he arrived, you know, as far as the would you say the greatest coach in UNT history? I don't know enough about their programs to know who he'd even be compared to, but I mean that's that's certainly possible. And if somebody from there says it, then um, that's you know an even greater compliment towards him. And uh, not all that surprising because he did very well there. So yeah, I mean he made his mark, and uh, clearly Texas Tech had already been talking with him. I mean. It was, it was, what, 30 minutes after the game? It wasn't even 30 minutes after the game was over, the announcement was made. So yep. this was a done deal. That's why it's, you know, there hadn't been a lot of chatter surrounding that tech job for a little while now, it seemed like. Maybe on, you know, Red Raider Sports, they were still, like, debating who the guy might be, but it was pretty clear that it was McCaslin for, I think, a few days now. And um, they landed their guy. I know that uh, Joey McGuire and, you know, former player, uh, was a part of the search committee, among others, and they had quotes from them, you know, at somewhere that I saw in one of the articles or one of the tweets or something like that, and, and they seem pumped up about it. It seems like he'll fit in great with just his energy and uh, with his commitment and obviously with his, uh, his skill set. So I think it's a great hire for Texas Tech. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer if you're a Baylor fan because there is a connection. You just kind of feel like you're looking in the mirror, uh, probably if you're Scott Drew at this point, but that's part of successful – you know, coaching trees is you're inevitably going to run into some guys. You know, Coach K eventually ran into a guy, or uh, Roy Williams ran into a guy, or, you know. Coach K had to run into Bob Knight, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so on and so forth. Everybody, you know, you coach long enough, you run into a guy, unless you're just a really selfish jerk and you didn't, you know, produce anybody off your staff. And we know that's not the case with Scott Drew. So, yeah, all his flowers are starting to blossom now. And pretty soon, you know, yeah, we might see um, – Matt Driscoll in the Big 12 or Alvin Brooks get that big job that he's been waiting on and you know who John Jacobs and I mean any number of guys so I don't think we're we're doing anything but just getting started in that regard so great hire uh, and happy for him and you know best of luck to him and hopefully we'll have Grant early next week on the show along with Ross Hodge when he's official with North Texas but I do know this is that McCaslin was at Tech before he was at Baylor he was on more recently of course Scott Drew's staff he also, Dave Aranda used to be at Texas Tech. So there's been a little bit of this. I see a couple of Tech fans trying to make sure we even that out. And, and then also, by the way, it's great for Grant McCaslin. And hopefully he'll have the same kind of success he had in junior college and also what he did at North Texas. That was a nice, a hell of a game last night against UAB. Now it's Final Four weekend. Of course, that is tomorrow, two games. And then the championship game on Monday night. Here is Bob Huggins down in Houston at the, uh, it's basically, it's an NABC convention. Coaches like Akeem Olajuwon, I'm sure Earl Campbell, although I know he might be attending, I'm not sure, Ronnie Lee and his funeral that is uh, tomorrow in Tyler. But here is Bob Huggins on the field of 68 last night when he was asked about what he thought about the University of Houston. We know how good they've been entering the Big 12. The Big 12, adding Houston, adding UCF, adding BYU, adding Cincinnati. With these teams in the league, how, how tough is it going to be, nightly basis, to play all of that? You want the honest answer? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. That's why I asked answer. you. We don't, want, the, we don't want false. Hugs, when have you not given an honest answer? Yeah. We don't want I one. feel sorry for them. <laughs> they have absolutely no idea what they're getting into. This is, I've been in a lot of leagues. You know that. I've yeah. been in a lot of leagues. And I've been in a lot of leagues with the best coaches in America and with the best players in America. And I'm telling you right now, the hardest league that I've ever coached in, ever, and the, the best fan bases. You go in and they may have just, they may be three and 17, and they've got 14,000 people Texas sitting in. I mean, it's unbelievable. The fan support, how good the players are, how good the coaching is. It is such a hard, hard league, and you got to go through it twice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, they're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. All right. I was given not permission many. by uh, the field of 68, by the way, to use that audio. And, and I, you know, again, the schedule is going to be different because there's more teams. And so I don't know about the double 
you play everybody twice, but you get the, uh, the, the point, Craig and Paul, about Bob Huggins and Houston, who has, of course, been in the top five, it seems like, for the last three or four years. Well, yeah, that was kind of the argument that, you know, when Houston was seated above Kansas as the one seed, as one of the one seeds this year, was, well, Kansas had all the – had more quad one wins and – all of this in Houston, while, yeah, their record was a little bit better, you know, they didn't have to do every night what Kansas had to do where they're about to get, they're about to have to. And so it'll be really interesting. It's only year one where, you know, it's not going to be everybody twice, but you're going to have to play 13 other teams, of which only two of them are right now not that good, and we don't know what's going to happen. Transfer portal and everything yep. can change everything fast. So this league's going to be a gauntlet. I, I you know – with as I do with most things, I completely agree with Bob Huggins. Yeah, uh, he's always fun to listen to. Uh, pretty much guarantee that they're going to lose uh, double-digit games for the first time in uh, eight years or so. Um, thirty-three and four, thirty-two and six, twenty-eight and four, twenty-three and eight, thirty-three and four, twenty-seven and eight. That's what they've done since twenty seventeen. Single-digit losses in every single year for what is that? Six years in a row. Y'all think that keeps up? I, I don't. I mean, I maybe depending on their non-conference. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, probably not. I'd say probably not. Um, if it does, then I don't know. Maybe they went clean in the non-con or maybe lost a game and then had a, what, like a 13-5 and five Big 12 record. And if they do that, then I'd replay this clip and say, like, what are you talking about, tough? Because that'd be pretty impressive to jump in the Big 12 and go, like, 13-5. and five. Uh, So, yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a, a, an adjustment for them. But... I mean, Kelvin Sampson's familiar with the Big 12. He's familiar with the territory, and Houston's only going to have more at their disposal than they've had before. I mean, they've been recruiting to the AAC. Uh, I don't know how much that makes a difference in the guys that they're looking at now being able to say it's the Big 12, but I imagine it makes some difference. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making the move, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to have that across their chest and those logos on their gear and all of that and the – opportunity to play you know Baylor and Texas Tech and and all the rest of these teams Kansas uh, I think yes certainly Kansas State after this year uh, is definitely going to be you know a feather in their cap and I'm sure he'll take full advantage of it and they'll be rip and ready to go I mean of all the teams that I feel you can be the most confident in I don't know about like track and field and things like that but I mean Houston basketball seems like a pretty safe bet to be one of the more seamless transitions but even still if the Big 12 truly is America's toughest conference, uh, then, yeah, I'd expect there's going to be a couple extra lumps than they're used to uh, receiving uh, here over the last few years. But they'll they'll be um, good, I'm sure, and they'll be tough for, for Big 12 teams as well. But, yeah, Huggins sounds like he's having some fun, and, and that's big words coming from a guy who's seen a lot of basketball. All right, here's a note. Uh, Grady Dick of Kansas has declared for the NBA draft. There were thoughts uh, from the beginning that he would be a player that you'd be around for a year as, uh, of course, Kansas battled and lost in the championship game uh, to Texas and then knocked out in the second round. Grady Dick, though, has entered the NBA draft. Now, I'm not so sure how many may have read the article yesterday by Dennis Dodd, who spoke again to Arizona President Robert Robbins, but there's one quote or two Dennis will join us today at 4.30, and I'll tell you up front, the interview in the segment was recorded. Uh, he was on his way back from covering football at Kansas State, and so he did do the, the, uh, the show or the segment by phone. But what's interesting to me was this quote, because Robbins is the one who put out, and I like him. I like what he's, he kind of seems like he's not afraid to talk, likes to talk, and he, he seems like he – you've heard that he might be as savvy when it comes to sports and athletics as anybody. And, and uh, the question was brought up about the, how united they were. He, uh, he had told CBS Sports and others two weeks ago suggesting Arizona had options if it wasn't satisfied with the Pac-12's New Deal. In those remarks, he said the league was 95% united while simultaneously noting that Arizona had the ability – to drive to Lubbock, where Big 12 team Texas Tech, of course, is located. He then responded yesterday to the article that Dennis wrote. It wasn't saying that because I was emboldened because we have option. There is no deal or no agreement where if everything blows up, we've got some place to go. When I read that, and I asked Dennis that in the segment, and I don't know how you guys reacted to that. I sent you the story. It was almost as if he's saying 
they don't have an option if something happens. But that's not what he said and also what we've kind of heard that there is that option. If Arizona, Arizona, if someone was to leave, they might be the first ones out the door. And I hope again for the Pac-12 sake that they keep everything together. Yeah, uh, the, it's weird that like he said some things like, I don't know where people are getting this or I don't know why that's out there. Well, like you kind of said it, man. He gave like, the August 15th date. Yeah, the, I mean, you kind of said that you hope to have it done by then or whatever or the final, like that's why like people think that. So, you know, you, you're the one who put it out there in the ether. You know that I, I think this could all be solved if the commissioner would just come out and well, say something. Okay, but I, I had, I, I think it might have been either Bob Thompson and or Jim Williams. One of the two brought this. Up. I asked them about that, and I, I can't remember which one it was because they both have. I've, I've stayed in touch with them a lot. Uh, it doesn't mean that George Klyovkov every day is not having Zoom and or conference calls with all the presidents. He's talking to the ones that matter, right? And that would be. His presidents, right? Isn't that who he needs to go? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. yeah. So it, there has been kind of an airtight from him. And you wonder if sometimes he has said some things that has come back to haunt him, like 40 million or 40 something million or whatever. I don't know. But uh, it, it, Robbins talked to Dennis Dodd. He's out of pocket now for a couple of weeks as he is going overseas to open up, I think, what is going to be a, a kind of a, an Air, University of Arizona campus in the Middle East. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can take it however you want to take it. I've seen some take a, a line from Gene Taylor during a radio interview and say that that suggests that Brett Yormark's not talking to anybody at all. And really, if you listen to it, it's like, is that what he's saying? Or can you look at it a different way? And guess what? You can look at it a different way if you want to. Like, that doesn't sound that confident. Oh, that sounds like he's not saying that, but he's saying this. And, like, and that's like what pretty much every quote in this entire realignment saga is dependent on who you ask, how they read it. That's the the take that you're going to get. I mean, that's, that's what it seems like to me. And so, um, you know, I heard that, I guess it was like a Gene Taylor blurb or something. And I didn't walk away from it going like, oh man, they're not having any discussions whatsoever. I just walked away going like, well, if Brett Yormark's talking to somebody, then he's probably not letting Gene Taylor know about it directly. Or it's not something that is, you know, worth uh, going down the road of speaking about it because it's, it's such a little type of thing. Well, Gene Taylor would know. And, and right. uh, like, like Mac has said many times about how they're ready to make decisions or moves if something was to happen. Right, but he basically said, like, there's nothing on the horizon. But, uh, again, like, what what have we been saying this entire time? I was like, yeah, there's nothing until there's a TV until deal done. Yes, like, that's exactly right. Again, there's nothing until a TV deal gets done. What's the answer to the next part of expansion as far as the Big 12 or Pac-12 concerned? Again, there's nothing until a TV deal gets done, and we just have to keep uh, reminding ourselves of that. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to take a bunch out of that, then then Gene Taylor says they're not talking to anybody, uh, or he, Brett Yormark, to his knowledge, is not talking to anybody, however he phrased it. Um, but we know that if all of a sudden the schools that they're not talking to <clears throat> were to give them a ring or were to be – you know, in a situation where they're not so happy, then you, what do we know? We know Brett Yormark's waiting by his phone. Yep. We know he's got somebody on speed dial. That's what we know. But, again, it all comes back to this TV deal. So, yeah, I mean, Robbins is somebody who was out there. I mean, wait, two weeks ago he had people convinced there was a TV deal coming, like, the next day based on the way that he was talking. He had everybody, like, that was when the pack swung back, so to speak, with their own little PR, and everybody got quiet for the last couple of weeks, and the, the waters calmed down, and, and, and all of that, and yet here he is, and he's, he's um, you know, definitely not as confident uh, as he was in the previous article that I read, but, you know, just kind of, a, I guess, saying the same thing of they're waiting on a TV deal. Uh, again, going back to that part, uh, for, for them, uh, I mean, that's, that's the key here. And so there's no rush, it appears. Uh, they still got a little over a year until that time comes up to where they're, you know, going up against it. And I guess there's not really concern for them uh, right now. But, you know, certainly the longer this drags on, the closer you get. And at some point, like, if it's another two, three months down the line and you're getting into that one-year period, then, yeah, the, I think everybody starts to get a little bit nervous about what exactly is taking so long. But right now they're putting up a, a good front and, and saying that uh, they think everything's okay or he is saying that he thinks everything's fine and, you know, there's no need for, for I guess, panic. So, uh, yeah, uh, good for good for the Pac-12. Let's see what comes down the pipeline. I think he also said that he doesn't expect it to be as much streaming as I guess maybe it was thought to have been uh, when really all that talk was getting out there a couple weeks back. 
I believe that he said something that he still feels like it'll be mostly linear uh, in that article, which is good news for Pac fans because that wasn't necessarily what you thought. The or quote was, I think this deal is going to have a heavy traditional analog cable piece. I think there may be some streaming in it, but I don't think anybody would want to go majority streaming. Yeah. And so there's a lot of think, which is what I was going to get to in that article of like, I think, I think, I think there's a lot of that in there. But yeah, he's he's saying the right things. If you're a pro Pac-12 person, that's bodes more well for that side of things than uh, rattling the cage of more expansion. But I do think he leaves it well open enough that if you think that if something goes haywire, there's still a chance something could pop off. Then I think you could read into that as well. Again, it's in the eye of the beholder, and I can see it from both sides with that article. He, uh, again, I have heard nothing to suggest the deal is imminent. There are these things about, well, we want to wait until after the Final Four. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with assessing who is the right fit, who assesses us. Well, plus they got to go on spring hope, break, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I hope Commissioner gets something done sooner rather than later so that the whole thing stops so we don't have to focus on it. I am perfectly willing to sit here and wait. So there's that on the story, and we'll have Dennis Dodd today at 4.30. We have a guy, uh, a, a journalist and author. He's written like 12 books. He's written a book, a bunch of books about sports and politics. Evan Weiner will join us today at 5 o'clock, mainly on the NFL and just TV business more so than it will be about college athletics and any media deals. Here's one note from yesterday's opening day in baseball. Now, I saw a little bit of response to this, that there might have been more games yesterday than normally. But here is from Alex Fast. The stolen base opening day comparison from one year to the next. Now, you let's say there were five more games or whatever. But look at this. Five stolen bases compared to 21. Caught stealing half of two of four. The success rate is more than really the number. 91% to 56%. How much does that have to do with the fact you can only throw over twice? How much does that have to do with the fact the bases are larger? Um I think both. And the other thing is, like, the pitch clock, too, like, helps you. Like, you're going to have to make decisions fast if you're the pitcher and all that and only throwing over there twice. Yes, let's get stolen bases back in. There's a whole generation of kids who didn't get to see a Ricky Henderson or, you know, Vince Coleman was the lesser version of that at the same time. Or, guy, like, Barry Bonds stole 40 bases in a year. So did Jose Canseco, and those were big guys. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not just about speed. It's about... I mean, they, not that they weren't fast. Of course, both of them were, you know, at times using things to make them bigger and stronger and faster. But it's about knowing when to go, and it makes it so much more exciting. So, yeah, give me more of, like, the potential that there could be some Ricky Henderson-like base stealing because that's an, that makes baseball way more fun. Well, it at least brings another element to the game that has not been there for at least for the most part for the last what seems like several years. Well, their plan worked. I mean, that's exactly what they were going for, uh, was to have more exciting plays like stolen bases. So that's why you have a pitch clock. That's why you have bigger bases. That's why you have a lot of this tweaking is to create those very plays. So I'm sure the people on the committee that decided on the ways to get more stolen bases were, you know, really partying it up last night. That was a very successful opening day for them. You know, obviously a exceptionally long way to go i mean this is baseball season guys mm -hmm. let's remember we're here this is a long journey ahead of 161 plus more games so you know let's check back in in july but yeah i mean that's clearly 16 more stolen bases that's that's not just an anomaly that's that's clearly something working uh, with the changes that they made so yeah that's what they were aiming for and uh, let's see how they capitalize on that and how that continues to uh, evolve throughout the year all right, so there's that. Jimmy Walker, Baylor graduate, is has not yet teed off in the second round at the Valero, Tex the Valero Texas Open. I think two under par after the opening round. Patrick Rogers leads the event right now at 11 under. That is a tough, tough course down in San Antonio. I've played it. It's probably the hardest golf course I think I've ever played in my life. We'll have Max Olsen here coming up next. Grayson Grundafer, he's been at practice. Also thoughts about some recruiting. I've seen a couple of notes about quarterbacks that now might be at least interested in Baylor. One, that's a former commit to Duke. Also, Scott Drew tomorrow is honored by Athletes in Action and also the Wooden Award. We'll have Eric Nelson, who's uh, Vice President of Catalytic Ministries for Action and Athletes in Action. He'll join us today at 4 o'clock. Again, the interview with Dennis Dodd at 4.30.
Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, Garrett Ross is here. The women's final four, of course, is tonight. LSU, Virginia Tech tip it off first. And then South Carolina and Iowa championship game will be Sunday. And this is 365 Sports. Ideal MRI in the central te- idealmri.com in the central texas marketplace with the state of the art technology mri machine that will find out what your doctor needs to know more about and you've been like having some really bad pain uh, you might know you have torn a ligament or you feel like or your doctor has said man i think you may have not just a pulled muscle but something that could be torn let's get a better look at it and idealmri.com will do that for you and for your doctor for your peace of mind and evidence of what is wrong and maybe you have the mri and it's not quite as bad as you think or your doctor has mentioned as well 497 dollars every single time the average MRI is $1,100, and it's not just once. It's $497 every single time and can be lower because they will help you with your insurance. We've had many people tell us that story of why they have gone to Ideal MRI, where the cost has just been too much elsewhere. IdealMRI.com in the Central Texas Marketplace, just off I-35 on the southern part of Waco. During Ram Truck Month, shop the greatest selection of new inventory in Central Texas at Allen Samuels. Ram trucks have all the quality for work or play. With impressive towing capabilities, heavy-duty payload capacity, smooth ride, and a luxury feel interior design. If you're looking for a truck that can do it all, come see the possibilities of a Ram truck. And if we don't have exactly what you want in stock, we can help you build a custom car, truck, SUV, or van of your dreams. Shop Allen Samuels, DCJ.com, or come in to see us today at Allen Samuels in Waco. Do you or your kids get nervous about going to the dentist? Stonewood Dental, Dr. Steve Childress, he can help. I've spent a career taking care of patients who as children had bad experiences, and now they're adults that hate going to the dentist. If I get a kid at three years old, and they come every six months, and it's a happy experience, it's normal for them. Now they have an accident at six or seven or eight at school. Now they have a broken tooth or a trauma, and they have to come here they're used to lights, they're used to water in their mouth, they're used to experience, they already trust us. It's amazing what we can do with that kid without it being a negative thing. But if I see a six or seven or eight year old that's never been to the dentist, and now they have a trauma or an unfortunate unexpected toothache, it's harder to do that for that kid and it not be somewhat of a negative experience. So bottom line is I try to teach kids and adults and teenagers everybody the way I'd want my family treated, which is where it's a necessary part of life. You just take care of it. It doesn't have to be that big a deal. Learn more. Stonewood-Dental.com. Baylor Scott and White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics, the team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike. Whether it's knee or shoulder pain, a wrist injury, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trust. Baylor Scott and White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics wants to get you back in the game. Hey, this is Bryce Petty, former starting quarterback and two-time Big 12 champion. And I know firsthand the importance of being in top shape both on and off the field. So listen up, men. If you're feeling beat down day in and day out and looking for that high-performance edge that separates the men from the boys, then look no further than the Petty Clinic Low T in Waco. Petty Clinic is a comprehensive men's health care clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Board-certified Dr. Kent Petty has a special interest in offering the highest quality medical care to men of all ages. Some of the services offered include screening and treatment for low testosterone or thyroid, infertility, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, while offering comprehensive wellness exams and complete men's health lab panels. High performance men, remember, it's not just a petty thing. This is Bryce Petty, encouraging you to reach out and Google search Petty Clinic Low T or go to PettyClinicLowT.com and get your complimentary lab screening today. It takes time to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than sports. It goes for your financial goals as well. You work hard for your money and you deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. And Chuck Verno, your Edward Jones financial advisor can help. If financial investments aren't putting forth the effort you desire, stop by today for a financial review. Chuck Verno, 720 North 64th Street in Waco, 254-732-1161. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Waco 
Regional Tennis and Fitness on Lakeshore Drive is premier elite life-changing experience where you can change your mind, body, and soul. Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness offers over 40 group exercise classes each week, including boot camp, indoor cycling, and more. If you haven't been there in quite some time, you're missing out on the improvements for our members. New flooring in the weight room and locker room, new paint and mirrors added in the weight room and group exercise room, with more new machines arriving over the next few months. New free weights, weight machines, TRX, rowing machines, stationary bikes, new treadmills, new elliptical machines on spacious weight room floor. Personal training with Christy London, Randall Corley, and Alex Botch, where you will be encouraged and motivated to grow. There's sauna, whirlpool, tanning bed, and kids club. The amenities are great. 16 tennis courts plus an 1,100-seat stadium court, eight pickleball courts, youth and adult tennis and pickleball lessons. Visit our website, wacotennis.com, or visit Waco Regional Tennis and Fitness on Lake Shore Drive in Waco. This is 365 Sports. The 3 o'clock hour is sponsored by Waco Custom Marketplace. Meats, sweets, Texas treats, and a cut above the rest. 425 Lake Air Drive, Waco. Max Olson, theathletic.com, joins us on 365 Sports. Max, thanks for your time, and we appreciate How was babysitting yesterday? <laughs> it was good. You know, that's uh, you got to keep your head on a swivel when your your parent sometimes, the two-year-old, doing great. Sometimes he's coughing along up, and you don't really know what's going on. But, uh, no, we're good. We're good. It, thanks, it'll, it'll keep your head on the swivel. It will. It, it, no question. Hey, what are your thoughts? I know this is a, a, a – you and I are close to this, but – Paul had mentioned this yesterday. Nebraska and Rule and, I guess, Trev Alberts are bringing back former Husker coach Frank Solich to honor him in about a month at their mm-hmm. spring game. And it seems like, man, yeah, it's been 20 years and it's past time. Yeah, I think probably, like, people outside of Nebraska would not really understand what is, like, the point or significance of this. But um, this was one of those, like, Frank Solich has, like, literally not come back to Lincoln since he was fired, not once. Um, there's just some very, like, understandably cold, kind of icy feelings there. Um, and, uh, you know, there's obviously been a lot of change in Nebraska in 20 years, but I know this is something that Frost and, and, and something that Trev uh, always wanted was for um, Frank Solch to come back and be honored in some way that was meaningful um, and try to kind of uh, mend things there. And so, yeah, very, very positive development. Um, for, for Nebraska fans who I think um, I think enough time has passed that people have a little bit better perspective on this and uh, just want want a chance to uh, thank so much for his time. Is this kind of like people going and like getting the piano out of the lake that Babe Ruth put out there on the ice to break the curse of the Bambino? a little bit with Frank Solich, like maybe all well, the best. I mean, Smokey can uh, certainly attest, like there's definitely a curse element here. Right. Yeah, no question. You could fire a coach who was like 58 and 19, uh, had just played for the national title. Now, again, they got they shouldn't have been in that game. Uh, they were slipping. Texas and Oklahoma were surging. And uh, so there was a little worry about whether they were being left behind. But, yeah, they haven't been worth a damn except a couple of years with Bo Pelini since. Yeah, yeah, it's um. And, and just like, just as we, we did a big project on this a couple of years ago, but it's kind of one of the all time classic botch jobs in terms of firing him, but not really having something better lined up, which is just a lesson you have oh, to yeah. learn that, it, you know, when, when, when things are good, um, and, and like, certainly, yeah, like Nebraska was not at its full potential for Solich or anything. Like, they were not Osborne level great under Solich, but, uh, it, it is a great, like, history lesson in college football that, um, you can fire somebody thinking you deserve better and, and definitely underestimate that like things can always get a lot worse than where you're at. Max, uh, how much, I guess, anticipation is there perhaps already or just uh, excitement over rule versus Dion in the not too distant future? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good one there. Um, they, you know, they've got, and I think Nebraska also has Minnesota, I think to open or yeah. one of their first games yeah. there too. So and Colorado pretty, plays TCU. pretty tough test. Yeah, that's right. Um, Colorado's got TCU, so some pretty tough tests there. I know you look at Dion's schedule, uh, and it does not do him a whole lot of favors in year one there. Uh, I think that, he, that, that when that when the Pac-12 schedule came out for them, like it helped kind of you look at that and say, like, man, probably should set pretty realistic expectations here, especially with how much he wants to flip the roster. 
the Colorado is probably going to have a, a down year in year one. But, yeah, hard to say with Nebraska at this point, like, how good they could be. But that, that's going to be a fun matchup. Obviously, it was a, it was a pretty important one uh, back in 19 when they played in, in Boulder and Nebraska uh, blew it and kind of went into a tailspin uh, the rest of the season there. So um, I think that one's going to be a lot of fun, especially with all the new faces kind of on both sides of those teams. Yeah, that, that kind of set the tone for the Scott Frost era. What were your thoughts of learning basically nothing during the NIL hearings in Congress? Yeah, it just it seemed like um, a, a waste of time, which is, is you know, I, a lot of the lobbying and, like, efforts to, to ask Congress to come in and intervene and fix all this stuff, it, like, I, I, understand, I can understand – why that could feel like the convenient um, solution to this stuff. But it, it, in a lot of ways like that, you know, just, it, it, it doesn't feel very realistic. It doesn't, doesn't really feel like it's something that's being taken very seriously, at least on that side of things. Um, so yeah, the, the DC intervening and trying to fix this stuff for the NCAA, uh, it's it, that, that definitely didn't feel like a step forward. What happened, what, what played out the other day. And uh partially because there's just not a whole lot of knowledge or interest. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't feel like that is going to be the magic solution, at least with that body. Um, but uh, certainly a lot more to play out there. Did you find it kind of surprising? I think the most thing I found surprising was that Trey Burton and uh, the, the softball player from FSU, uh, Mudge, I believe her last name is, uh, both were not in favor of – unionization or collective bargaining they didn't want to lose the nil model as it stands right now yeah i mean it's probably not that hard to find two people who will yeah. agree with the point you want to put out there right like i think but, but obviously like at this point in time um it, you know when you say like you know moving to employees moving to collective bargaining like you can understand in theory how that would help solve some of the big picture problems here, but, but certainly it's hard to like lay out, here's how that would work. You know, um, I, there's just, it, it, you know, that will, we'll, I, I think we'll probably get there someday, but it, it's hard to say, here's the very easy way to do that, that everybody, you know, especially at the AD level is like comfortable with. So I, I understand like the logistics of that are challenging, but uh, certainly, and I'm sure you saw that what, what Mike Gundy put out there this week, like certainly people are starting to understand that like, the employee model, there's like some benefits there that uh, that ultimately will solve some of the things people complain about so much. Max, uh, obviously there's been uh, the ongoing topic of expansion. You guys have, have written about it. It's been a bit more quieter since the PAC kind of had their, their turn at the mic, so to speak. Yeah. San Diego State in the process is doing what they're doing. Just any more insight or any feel one way or the other, any differently really as far as the ongoing PAC-12 you know, talks, what have you, uh, versus maybe a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I mean, certainly a few weeks ago, it seemed like this thing was heading closer to resolution. And now I think probably realistically, um, it's, it's you know, everybody has to just keep waiting. Um, I, you know, don't don't know where George Fayetteoff and the Pac-12 are at right now in terms of the negotiating on um, the, this TV deal and, and even who the partners would be on this. I would be surprised if his Fox had come into the picture. I know John Quintana has put that out there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying he's wrong, but a little bit of skepticism about that from people I talk to. Um, but, I, you know, don't know. Don't know which way this is the wind's blowing here with the Pac-12 stuff. Certainly doesn't seem like it's going to get solved here in the next few days or anything like that. So um, it's hard to tell what the timetable is and the deadlines are for this kind of stuff. I think it's going to keep playing out. And so the Big 12 folks, I, I think I just have to kind of sit back and – yeah, that plays out. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it kind of when Dennis Dodd yesterday was CBS Sports, and I know that the, the president, some of them at the, the Pac-12 have been able to talk a little bit. It, it, it seems like the, what, well, it was going to be this day, then this day. And I, Bob Thompson said this to me. He goes, what is the rush right now? Is it more important to get it done or to get it done right? Yeah, no, I think, you're, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, ultimately, I think everyone kind of understands what the objectives are here for the Pac-12. Um, it, it is to get as much money or more than the Big 12 got and to do so in a way where the deal is still mostly linear and not all streaming. Um, so whatever combination they come up with that gets to that, um, I, I think the uh, folks on the Pac-12 side are, are probably willing to wait um, and, as long as the, the, the final offer ends up being what they're looking for. So, 
Yeah, you know, I, I think that stuff will probably go quiet here for a little while, um, as much as there was a lot of anticipation um, in March around tournament time and stuff. Like, it just does seem like we probably have to sit back and wait a few more weeks on that. Max, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. At Max Olson, theathletic.com with us. Usually Thursdays, but today joined us here early on in the show. Also, a little bit around the corner, it's Grayson Grunhafer. He's been to some of the practices. Uh, he's also discussed some of the possible recruits that are now on Baylor's radar, and, and in some cases, some who have been committed that are now interested in Baylor, even at the quarterback position. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com recruiting coordinator or analyst, is next on 365 Sports. Richard Carr, Buick GMC Cadillac. They've got the Texas size selection back at Richard Carr right now, and they are, as they always have been, and for over 20 years in Central Texas, the people that you can count on, not only when it comes to uh, getting a great deal on uh, you know new vehicles, but also getting uh, great deals on service of your current vehicle, also getting... Um, you know, great service. Anytime you enter, great customer service, uh, friendly folks, and uh, you feel like uh, you're part of the family when you head on over to Richard Carr. Buying new, pre-owned, or just getting your car fixed up. And right now, it's their 21st, 24th anniversary sale, which means they've got big savings on pre-owned cars and trucks, special savings on GMC, Sierra, and Buick Envision SUVs in particular. Uh, right now, dozens of Sierra trucks are on the lot. Qualified buyers can save thousands on the SLT 1500s and get special financing on those new 2023 GMC Sierras. You can contact the good folks over at Richard Carr for more details on the exact numbers and percentages and things of that nature. Uh, but if you're looking uh, for perhaps more of the SUV route, they've also got thousands off of the Buick Envisions as well from the 2023 line. You can also get lease payments with 5000 down cash or trade at two sixty nine per month and save thousands on the purchase of a 2023 Buick Envision. Uh, they also have a lot full of quality pre-owned cars and trucks, many of them under $20,000 as well, affordable, thoroughly inspected, and ready to finance for almost any credit rating, quality vehicles ready to drive today. So no matter where you look, new or pre-owned, truck or SUV, uh, they've got thousands of dollars in savings that can be yours special financing and all the works just contact the good folks over at that dealership and uh, if you're just looking for you know a used car with some some benefits uh, they'll hook you up looking to get your car fixed up like i said they'll hook you up no matter what it is that you're looking for they are the people that you can count on for 24 years in central texas they built a reputation as uh as that dealership that you can count on run by proud central texans Log on to richardcar.com today. Call now or go see them now off Highway 6 at the Imperial Exit. And if your tires are not uh, wearing evenly or you have to work too hard to stay between the lines, speaking of realignment as we were just speaking to with Max, maybe it's time for a factory-trained expert uh, to get uh, your wheel realignment done over at Richard Carr. Get four wheels realigned for only $89.95. Again, contact them over at richardcar.com today. Call now or go see them now off Highway 6 at the Imperial Exit. The future's bright, the time is now. College is what you make it. It's a late night pizza run and all nighters coding a new project. It's having big dreams and making them a reality. It's a professor who knows your name and your story. It's preparation for your future, your calling, your life. And at Baylor, it's even more. We will Baylor, where lights shine bright. Stepping into a new pair of boots is great, but stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can also add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. There are more than 150 occupational specialties to help them find the best fit for their future. See all the things your son or daughter can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. Camille Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one. Commercial, farm and ranch, or residential, Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction. With a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you, Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming, Warm. Welcome home. 
pizza, burgers, and Bears football. There's no place around Waco that serves them all other than Bubba's 33. Come show your green and gold and enjoy some of Waco's best food and beverages while watching your favorite team, the Bears. When real Bears fans get hungry, Bubba's 33 is the number one spot for ice cold drinks, hand stretched, stone baked pizzas, and bacon infused burgers. Join us for indoor or patio dining. Bubba's 33, Waco's restaurant and proud supporter of Baylor Bears football. Sick em, Bears. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be a part of the Waco community. We're a small family business right here in Central Texas, and our goal is to bring down the cost of health care while maintaining high quality. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important, and unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. That's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through the difficult time. We offer premium MRIs just like a hospital with state-of-the-art technology and specialists, but you'll pay less sometimes thousands of dollars less whether you're using insurance or not at ideal mri we accept most insurance and there are no hidden costs even offering financing if that's needed everything included in the price and you'll not get something as a surprise in the mail later on if you need an mri ask your doctor about ideal mri they'll know you can schedule an appointment safely from home online in minutes at idealmri.com or give us a call 833 ideal mri ideal mri MRI.com. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, over 600,000 words in the dictionary, and just three of them said together can change everything. Let's order pizza. Those three words lead to dough made from scratch and three fresh signature cheeses that blanket golden crust in a heavenly melt on Marco's Pizza that'll blow your mind. So visit Marco's.com to order and stop by Marco's Pizza in Bellmead, China Spring, Woodway, and in Robinson. Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. Welcome back to 365 Sports. It's time for our weekly segment with Grayson Grundhafer of Sikkim365.com. Brought to you by Pioneer Steel and Pipe, where customer service is their main focus and best in metal, steel, and pipe for large or small projects with two locations in Waco and Bryan. Family owned and operated since 1943. Grayson Grunhaper, Sikkim365.com, recruiting analyst, BearCast co-host, and has his own college uh, podcast as well on many things. He's been doing a lot of discussion with college athletics and the media deals joins us. So, Grayson, obviously when teams are hosting their spring drills and there's weekends and then there's eventually a game, what is right now Baylor in bringing people on campus as far as prospects? How busy is that? It's huge right now. And I mean, I know it's something we talked a little bit about last week as well, but um, it's just a time where, you know, there's a lot of prospects who are visiting, whether it's during the week or on the weekend, because a lot of people want to come and see practice and, and they want to see kind of how the coaches coach, how the players respond to the coaching, what the culture is like. Uh, you can see a lot of things by watching a practice and then being able to go to the meetings and various, you know, team meetings and position uh, meetings as well. You get to learn a lot and you get to see a lot uh, from the coaches and the players. And then, of course, you know, touring campus and getting to see things like that uh, as well, which isn't as big of a deal right now for Baylor since, you know, a lot of their facilities are kind of under construction. So it's more of a, hey, this is being built for the future type thing instead of really showing off the facilities, uh, you know, that they currently have. Um, but I think right now, you know, it's very important that Baylor's got like 30 some guys on campus this weekend. They had 30 some guys on campus last weekend, uh, a big mix and match of, you know, priority guys in the 2024 class guys they're looking at in the 2025 class and just kind of, you know, a bunch of guys that fall in between there. So yeah, it's a very busy time. Grayson, what do you think is the storyline of spring so far, even though, Maybe outside of the quarterback battle, but just something that maybe you've you've picked up on here in the early goings of the first couple of weeks. You know, it was something that I actually thought a lot about, or I think it was earlier this week or maybe last week. And I've just continued to be thinking about this concept. So last year we talked about how the offensive line, defensive line were going to kind of carry Baylor. That was the thought going into the season, and I think both probably performed a little below expectation 
I think offensively they didn't run the ball quite as effectively as I think we all expected it. And then on the defensive side, it felt like the defensive line really wore down towards the end of the season. So uh, I didn't expect this to be a storyline, but here it is. I, I think that the defensive line for Baylor, if you include the Jack position, which is that outside linebacker spot, um, I think it might be the best defensive line they've had um, depth-wise ever. And athletically, I think it is the best they've ever had. Um, when you look at kind of the, the bodies that they have at those positions, the fact that they have, you know, some veterans like T.J. Franklin, Gabe Hall, Garmin Randolph, really anchoring that room. But then you talk about the younger guys who are kind of, you know, up and coming. If you look at guys like Kyne Roberts Day, Kyler Jordan, uh, Jackie Marshall, who we saw flashes of last year, Cooper Lance, Jarrell Boykins, the JUCO transfer. And then, you know, they're also bringing in three guys in the summer as well who fit everything that they want on the defensive line uh, also. And Brendan Bett, D.K. Kalu, and Trent Thomas. So I just think that there's this depth and this, you know, the size that they have and the athleticism. I just think they're going to be really, really tough to stop uh, from a pass rush standpoint, and they're going to be very good against the run. So I was surprised by that, but I really – I'm just starting to feel that way over the last, you know, couple of weeks after watching them practice. So. We got to talk to AJ Stewart, a new assistant head coach and running backs coach. Yesterday, he was uh, great to hear him speak for the the first time here in Waco. Got an interesting room. They obviously put up uh, what Richard Reese and Dominic Richardson and Quaylen Jones as far as the uh, media obligations go. Uh, just what are your thoughts kind of on the, the running back room as we turn from Justin Johnson to A.J. Stewart? What areas do you see possible improvement? And uh, where are your kind of thoughts as far as uh, that group and the way that's been put together? Yeah, so I think last year they were really missing someone kind of like Abram Smith. And, you know, honestly, I don't even think it was the coach's fault when it came down to that because Tay McWilliams was supposed to play such a big role. Uh, in that and what I mean by that is someone who when they get hit in the backfield is still falling forward and getting you you know three or four yards they just they didn't have that last year and so I think coming into this year it was really important that they found a guy that can do that and I think Dominic Richardson is the guy that can do that and we saw it I mean firsthand Oklahoma State versus Baylor it felt like Baylor was hitting him in the backfield or you know for a one-yard gain and then somehow it was turning into three or four yards, and that's something that Abram Smith did so well during his time at Baylor. And even Treston Ebner didn't get enough credit for that either. He did a very nice job of that as well. Um, but I think Richardson's going to provide some of that uh, for this offense. And then you throw in the fact that Quaylen Jones found a role last year, specifically as a pass blocker, but also showed flashes in the run game. And then Richard Reese, obviously, I mean, he had a breakout season as a true freshman. And now the expectations are through the roof for him. So I really like what they're building. I love Bryson Washington as a recruit. He was uh, one of my top three recruits in this entire uh, 2023 recruiting class for Baylor. And so I, I just really think they have a nice mix and match. They're also going to have Dawson Pendergrass arriving in the summer to add another uh, different body type, a different frame to the mix as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I think AJ Stewart's really excited about the group also. And, if the offensive line can come together, I think there's, you know, four really good running backs that could emerge for Baylor this season. I believe it was Richard Reese, and I could be wrong, and I've heard more than just him say this, that there was something missing. And, and it was obvious, not only what could have been the disconnect between some of the coaches or whatever else, I don't think Ron Roberts got stupid from one year to the next, but we have heard some players say that there was maybe – a disconnect among the team last year. Have you been hearing that too? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that that's, he's the first one to say that. I mean, Dave Aranda has basically admitted to that, that there was a disconnect, that there just wasn't, you know, leaders emerging, whether it's from uh, the team or the coaches. I mean, Dave Aranda was brutally honest about it, you know, about how he just felt like he needed to be, uh, I guess the words would be more mean at times. And yeah. so I do think that there's, you know, there's something to that, right? For a coach to admit that, that, hey, you know what? I made a mistake. I wasn't as mean as I need to be or as serious as I need to be at times. I mean, I, I think that you also need leaders to emerge. And the crazy part is, if you look at Baylor's roster last year, you would have thought that there would be a bunch of leaders on that team. 
But the problem is, is it has to be a team wide thing. It can't just be a couple leaders here or there. It's everyone's got to get on board with that mindset and being leaders themselves and not, and you know, holding other people accountable. It can't just be a couple guys here and there. And so I think this team's learning from that. I think, you know, coming into this year, the preseason expectations aren't as high as they were the year before. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, this team needs to start from ground zero and start working their way back up and getting to a point where everyone on the team is a leader and that the guys who are older are really instilling that leadership role into the young guys. So, yeah, it, it's very important. It definitely, definitely, definitely was something that was missing last year. And I think it's very evident based on pretty much every comment we've heard from players and coaches. So what does a mean Dave Aranda look like? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tell you, but I think that uh, I think it's one of those things where it's probably something you have to see, you know, behind the curtains. I don't think he's going to show it, you know, in a interview or, you know, talking to the media. But sometimes you see him get pretty fiery on the sidelines. And, uh, you know, whether it's for one reason or another, you know, he can he can get pretty fiery. So I, I'm sure that this year, this spring in particular, uh, there's probably an edge to him that maybe we haven't seen over the past couple of years. Grayson, what are you looking out for next as far as uh, just storylines go, or whether that be with this team and, you know, the fact that we've got, what, another three weeks to go, uh, or on the recruiting side of things? Is there just anything that's kind of on your radar at the moment? I think, you know, as far as recruiting goes, it's really interesting to see how much time and effort Baylor's putting into the quarterback recruitment and it it's really just one of those things where you go okay so they've offered Alito quarterback uh Hoss Haney who's on a visit right now actually um and then New Braunfels Canyon quarterback Deuce Adams uh, who's visiting Louisville this weekend and we know that those two are priorities um in this class but then they've also they're bringing in two quarterbacks who are 2024 guys that Noah Lugo who's a quarterback at Eaton and then actually an out-of-state kid in Nate Bennett uh, out of Oaks Christian in California. So they're evaluating 2024 quarterback prospects still, even though it seems like they've kind of eyed in on their two top targets. Uh, I did want to mention the Alito quarterback, uh, Haas Haney. He is visiting, and he also decommitted from Duke uh, a little bit ago, which was something, or I guess a week ago, which was something that we kind of talked about a little bit uh, on this show. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of moving parts there. They're also looking at 2025 quarterbacks, have three of those guys on campus uh, this weekend as well, uh, with Ty Hawkins, Keldon Ryan, and then Demetrius Brisbane. So a lot of moving parts of the quarterback position. I think it's just one of those things where you look at it and you go, okay, it's clear they're going to provide a lot of resources. They're going to look at a lot of different quarterbacks, and maybe part of that is because of what happened uh, earlier in the winter with uh, Austin Novosad electing to flip his commitment so late in the process. So I think it's one of those things where you want to continue building a bunch of relationships, see which guys, which guys fit your culture, and then also, you know, maybe have backup plans because Baylor absolutely needs to take a quarterback in 2024 class. Yeah, they do. After the, the last couple of years, not one then, of course, with the Novosad last second decommitment. Thank you very much, Grayson. Great stuff. Grayson with do, numerous, uh, I guess you could say, Threads on uh, Sikkim365.com in the premium section. If somebody's offered or somebody's visiting, he has that updated constantly uh, here with 365 Sports. We'll come back in a moment with Eric Nelson. Athletes in action. Coach Wooden, Keys to Life Award winner is Baylor head coach Scott Drew. We asked him about that when that first came out back, I think even in February. But Eric Nelson is there, what it means, what kind of award, and also his thoughts about Scott Drew. That and more, this is 365 Sports. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, Lakeshore Drive, North 19th Street, a hidden gem. Look, it's the weekend. If you're going to head out and uh, you want to get some craft beer, well, it is springtime, and there's some great brews coming on through there, and they're rotating that roster right now. If you want some local Texas craft whiskey, man, there's going to be new stuff coming through there, whether it's Balcones, Devil's River, uh, TX, Garrison Brothers. Garrison, I got some Garrison Brothers there a couple weeks ago that is absolutely, it was some of the best uh, stuff I've ever had. It was absolutely out of this world. Uh, and I I've never had anything at, at Riverman Liquor and Wine that I've had to call up and tell them, like, hey, this recommendation was made to me, and it's absolute swill. Everything is uh, that they have really good. I mean, they have everything for everybody's taste, but if you ask them for something, they're going to give you their honest opinion about it, uh, whether it's good or not and how they feel about it. 
it's a fantastic place. Great customer service, a speedy drive through window. Uh, Available on DoorDash, there's really nothing that they don't do. At Riverman Liquor and Wine, Lakeshore Drive and North 19th Street, behind the bank. Cars price right, both day and night. Average your car in Texas. Trucks built for you, red, white, and blue. Average your car in Texas. Cars that zoom with lots of room. Average your car in Texas. Automatic Chef Canteen is a full-service micro-market vending and office coffee provider with state-of-the-art vending equipment, a wide variety of products, and offering custom-fitted micro-market vending office coffee solutions for your employee break room. You want a full break room solution and a workplace oasis? Well, Automatic Chef Canteen, locally owned and operated for over 50 years in Central Texas, also includes in-house mechanics on call 24-7 for fast, reliable service and maintenance. Automatic Chef Canteen, 6900 Imperial Drive in Waco or online at automaticchefcanteen.com. After my first car accident, I feared the biggest damage would be to my wallet. I expected a mountain of bills and a long, drawn-out process. But my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent was there when I needed her and helped me get back on my feet and in my car in no time. Instead of a hassle, I got reassurance and a quick recovery. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. Waco Custom Marketplace is your hometown grocery store with a full-service butcher shop and baker. Hi, this is David Smoke. The butcher shop can take your customized orders for seafood, pork, and poultry and custom cut your favorite steaks from bacon wrap fillets to T-bone to bone and ribeyes. Cut specifically the way you want. They have Norwegian salmon fillets, catfish fillets, sliced ham or turkey and lunch meat, variety of cheese available, and several options of sausage links. Fresh chicken breast or whole chickens, sliced bacon, pork chops, ground beef, marinated beef, and chicken fajita and always large briskets available, plus fresh vegetables. So the great product, customer service, and family tradition of the Bauer family continues at Waco Custom Marketplace, open Monday through Saturday. A full-service butcher shop and bakery available. Waco Custom Marketplace, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco, or WacoCustomMarketplace.com. In the market for a quality metal building? Since 1943, Pioneer Steel & Pipe has helped Central Texas residential and commercial customers with metal building design, panel options, building components, and trim options. Pioneer Steel & Pipe's residential line is energy efficient, offers low maintenance, reduces insurance payments, is impact resistant, and carries up to a 45-year limited warranty. In addition, they can also help you find a metal building contractor for your project. Pioneer Steel & Pipe with locations in Waco and Bryan and at PioneerBoys.com. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texans are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge checking and savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB Your Bank for Life. Member FDIC. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. The 4 o'clock hour is sponsored by Boozer's Jewelers, the wedding ring store, specializing in custom jewelry and repair, all in-house. Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Chat room is rolling. Text line is open, 254-339-1122. We're going to go down to Houston in a moment with the men's Final Four here momentarily on the Scott Drew Award with the uh, Wooden Award, the Coach Wooden Keys to Life Award winner. I got this stat. I didn't know. I never thought about this. But Mike Bean on the chat room, and Mike is a huge KU fan, Virginia Tech women who play LSU uh, right after our show ends, yeah, if they win the championship, they would then that, – that means that would be their first ever national championship in any sport, and that would only leave Kansas State left without a national title. I did not know that. 
But that was a little nugget from Mike Bean from our chat room. Uh, Coach Wooden, Keys to Life Award winner, Scott Drew, will be honored at Houston in the Final Four. Of course, the games are tomorrow night, but there's a lot more going on announced by Athletes in Action. Eric Nelson, Vice President, Catalytic Ministries for Athletes in Action, joins us with Paul Craig, David Smoke on 365 Sports. Thank you very much, Eric. Can you kind of give us some background on the award? Everyone knows John Wooden, UCLA, and much more what he stood for, but a little background on the award. Well, I hope everybody knows John Wooden, right? I yeah. mean, we're finding more and more people don't know who he is. We have to remind him of his greatness. But uh, thanks for thanks for having us on and for just, um, um, be, you know, I think it's it's great that um, Scott's getting honored this way. It's the 25th year of this particular award. It's the John Wooden Keys to Life Award. And uh, we've honored uh, folks that have demonstrated – a, a life within their profession of coaching or play and or playing beyond um, and in their community of character uh, leadership faith very integrated into their life and have done it at a very high level and so we're really pleased and honored that scott will be the recipient this year what about Coach Drew kind of lines up with Coach Wooden's mission and your mission and all that uh, that kind of led to him being the, the winner this year? Well, the first thing that would come to mind as you ask that is just there's a, a principle-based approach to how they go about leading their programs. And from all, you know, all that we know of Coach Wooden and had, had a chance to spend time with Coach Wooden and the early 2000s before he passed and it was really true who he was was based on his principles uh his pyramid of success and the things that he wrote about and lived by and coached by and coach drew is really the same you know we i think people are getting to know uh many of the principles about god first and others and then yourself and so the selflessness of his teams and the joy that they play by um, have really been evidence. One thing for coaches to say those things and put them in their locker room to talk about it's another where they really lived out in their program. That That's when you can really tell that it's true and it's a part of uh, who they are and how they lead. Eric, there's a lot of, uh, you know, big names and, and interesting names that have won this award, but uh, one in particular, the same last name as Scott Drew, his father, Homer. How cool is it that uh, Scott's now sharing an honor that his father received uh, a few years back? Oh, it, it's actually really fun. You know, um, years ago, years ago, I stayed in Homer's house, had a chance to, uh, because we had a training camp with Athletes in Action there, and I found out, man, this guy's really competitive. He plays ping pong like nobody's business. And, I found <laughs> out, and, we, and we learned more about his family, and they're all, they all are. Uh, they all really have the same um, values, and they and they. It's such. It's such a, um, a an impacting family uh, through the sport of basketball, and they really have done so much for the game. They've done a lot for athletes in action over the years, and we're grateful for that. And um, uh, it's the first time it's ever happened in 25 years of this particular war. We've had a father and son win it, so it's. Uh, it's great. We'll have a lot of folks there in the room. Um, Jerry Colangelo and Clark Kellogg will be there. Of course, uh, uh, one of Baylor's former Board of Regents or current, Jeff Sweeter, is going to be helping do the welcome. And it's going to be a great morning tomorrow. I, I just saw this, that you're a Texas Tech grad? Yes. Uh, they just hired former Tech and also Scott Drew assistant uh, in, in Grant McCaslin, who just won the NIT last night. Your thoughts about that? Oh man, Grant's a, he's a good one. I mean, he comes from a good tree, right? There's a, <laughs> yeah. a, a, a principle based approach and he, he's, uh, he's just really solid as a person. He's solid in, in his faith. He, uh, he's a good teacher and he'll, he'll do really well. He'll do really well. I mean, you, you live at the conference now and now you've got a couple of former Baylor guys there and it's, it's really it says a lot about who Scott is for sure. So Eric Nelson, Vice President, Catalytic Ministries, a part of Athletes in Action. I remember the first time I ever, and this might have been, well, I, I, I'm 63, so I don't know the exact time, 
But when I first heard of Athletes in Action, I understood the, the mission statement, so to speak. But the basketball team traveled and played like everywhere. How much does that still go on today? Oh, that's, boy, that's a great question. And we, uh, it actually got started 56 years ago with, with uh, one of the staff, the new staff of AIA that went to a convention like we're experiencing here in Houston. And he walked into a coach's reception. He said, hey, anybody want to play some exhibition games? And one guy that probably had a few too many drinks said, hey, I'll, I'll, <laughs> we'll play. And before you know it, they had a 26-game schedule and didn't have a team. And so they, 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 they had to assemble a team and said, we're going we're gonna to travel and play and share the gospel. And uh, soon became known as the best amateur team in the mm -hmm. world. And actually played the Russian national team. Um, so currently we've got teams that uh, do travel internationally and compete. Um, and because the NCAA actually took those exhibition games away from um, – non-collegiate teams in 2004 we've had to just we've had to reinvent in different ways we don't get to play those games anymore which we'd like to and actually coaches like him but we there was a number of circumstances that led to uh, not letting non-collegiate teams play so we we uh we still take teams over the, overseas we've actually had a lot of baylor guys travel with us over the years and um have some life-changing experiences that's awesome us. Eric, what would be the pro – I mean, there's a lot of changes going on in the NCAA right now. What was true in 2004 is clearly not true now for a lot of things. Is there a process for maybe getting that back for you guys? It's a great question. We've talked about it even this, this year. Um, I think because of all the changes, it's probably a good time to, to revisit it. They would have to uh, – there would have to be some loosening up of what happens in the preseason games – um, allowing for some non-collegiate teams to play. Uh, but I think everything seems to be pretty open right now, especially with uh, some of the changes and the way, way college is and, and sports is. And I mean, honestly, with it, with the transfer portal, the way, the way it is, um, you know, coaches are needing to really help to, to assemble their teams and develop good chemistry and culture a little differently and quicker. So it's changed the availability of players because they want them around and need them around to, to do that. So it's, it's just, it's a different world we're in right now for sure. Yeah. And you, you know, you see schools that go over, like Baylor's been, I think to Italy, they have been to Canada. They've played in some of these exhibitions uh, during the summer, which is great because they get a chance to play. So maybe that can be reestablished like Paul mentioned. And like you mentioned, it's not quite as the same. When, when was the first time you ever met Scott Drew? Um, it was my first year on staff with AIA in 2004, three and four, and really met the Drew family over the next, got to know them over the next couple of years. We've got, we have some staff that have, that have been with us for 50 years and took all, the entire Drew family overseas uh, on some athletes and action trips as players and homework coached. And so Bryce, uh, there's a couple of uh, staff on, uh, a couple of guys on his staff that have actually been were, were, with us, were with us on those tours. So a lot of history with the Drew family uh, going overseas with us and uh, coaching. And But I met Scott uh, in uh, right, right as he took over at Baylor. And you know how he had a dream then, and coaches say a lot, but everyone knows the comments about wanting to compete for a national championship. What did it mean? And you have other coaches you know and others you've, players you've honored but what did it mean to you knowing the family the way you do when they were able to beat Gonzaga and win the national title a couple of years ago based on when you first met him after he took the job there are very few people that come in with a plan and uh, stay the course with the kind of optimism that Scott did well, and that's it's really who their family is too. But um, I would attribute, and for the administration to say we're we are we are in the, in this for the long haul. I mean, it says a lot about them. Says a lot about Scott because in this microwave culture of college basketball, we want results really fast right now. Um, 
for him to stay the course on who he was and the university to stick with the plan. I just, you just don't see it very often anymore. So um, I think, I think everybody probably enjoyed just watching the journey and being part of it and just seeing the growth year by year and to a place where they were, they had all the elements and the toughness to win, to do what you got to do to win a national championship and just being the cohesive unit they were. It, it was remarkable, honestly, remarkable. So the is the breakfast or the award ceremony tomorrow, or has it already been done today with everyone converging on Houston? There will be about 1,200 people at the Hilton Americas tomorrow morning um, for the, the event. It's at 8 a.m. Um, we'll have um, a, a number of basketball people doing other interviews. It's part of a larger program, mm-hmm. but the kind of the, 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 the keynote, piece of it is the um is the award given at the end so drew family drew family will be involved and scott will be interviewed by sage Steele and fran Priscilla around the award so be awesome looking forward to a great morning if somebody wants to be a part or wants to know more about athletes in action what would you suggest um you can go to athletesinaction.org and there are some uh inquiry pages there you can look into or they can feel free to email me or one of our staff which are all on the website uh, but feel free to just reach out if you want to know how to serve or be a part volunteer staff go overseas participate on mission help with the final four whatever uh we could always use the help eric thank you very much for coming on talking with us about coach drew the honor you mentioned last question that you knew john wooden pretty well Nobody will ever have that kind of run again. Will they win in men's basketball? Yeah, I don't think this. Yeah, I don't think people would. Uh, again, the circumstances of how that happened probably will never happen again. Um, and there's so many other things pulling at programs, mm-hmm. and I don't think players players don't stick with it. And he had players that stayed, and um, it's just so hard to do that again and you see it this year right Mm -hmm. there's four teams that you never would have picked that are going to be here that are here playing and so that's what makes that that kind of thing so difficult probably never see it again i wouldn't think so eric thank you so much for what you're doing and what you represent eric nelson with us vice president catalytic ministries for the um, athletes in action thanks to uh, matt roberts for helping put that together. Craig, you mentioned Homer Drew. Just a quick note, this started back in the late 90s, but A.C. Green, Jerry Colangelo, Mark Price, the former Cavaliers, played at Georgia Tech, right? Clark Kellogg, uh, who's been on this show, David Robinson. Let's see here. Hubert Davis, North Carolina's head coach. David Thompson, the great Skywalker from uh, NC State, won a national title in 74 that broke up the long string of wins in be- or interrupted the string of wins for UCLA. Charlie Ward, Won it uh, back in 2010 and 11, Homer Drew. Dick Bennett, uh, head coach at Wisconsin. Uh, Let's see. Cassie Russell, longtime former New York Knicks player. And I'm not sure who else he played for in the NBA. So those are some of the names. Paul Westfall, Rick Barnes, and now. And Billy Kennedy, former A&M coach, who's now, uh, again, and and now Scott Drew. All right. When we come back, we're going to hear from uh, Dennis Dodd. CBSSports.com had a story yesterday. His uh, discussion picked up the phone, called President Robbins at Arizona. His thoughts about uh, where they are in the Pac-12, at least anything new that has changed, that and more. And this is 365 Sports. PettyClinicLowT.com. Dr. Kent Petty can help you become the high-performance man that you want to be, need to be, and used to be. Somebody asked me how I just came up with those phrases, and I just it made sense. Want to be now, uh, need to be, of course, and used to be is maybe it was just a year ago or five or ten when things just started not to feel the same. When you didn't feel that energy, you don't sleep as well. And a lot of that, again, could be the fact that it's your diet, exercise, or just you're depressed. Things like that happen. But testosterone in men will drop. One out of every three men have symptomatic issues of low testosterone. And if you do, it can affect your sleep, your energy, your body fat, and your sex drive. It could affect just some of that or all of that. Dr. Petty, contact them on the website, pettycliniclowt.com, email, phone number. He will set up or the staff will set up for you to get your blood work. He'll get the results, look at your testosterone level, and 
If it's too low, give you the option for a program to increase the testosterone level so you can become the high-performance man you want to be, used to be, and need to be at Petty Clinic, LowT.com. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchie Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchie Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchie Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchie Group at 1-800-258-8302. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, Lake Shore Drive, North 19th Street, right behind the bank, is a hidden gem in Waco. If you're a fan of bourbon, especially local Texas bourbons, that's where you gotta go. Balcones, TX, Devil's River, whatever it is, they've got it. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, plus the best selection of craft beers in Waco, seasonally churned out throughout the year, whether it's spring, summer, fall, or winter. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, best selection of craft beers, a speedy drive through window, an excellent and customer service. Find out more on Instagram or just go by and see them. Lakeshore Drive at North 19th Street behind the bank. How did Edward Jones become one of the biggest financial service companies in the world? By not acting that way. Financial strategies, one-on-one -on -one advice, it's a big difference. And that's why Brad Wilson, your Edward Jones financial advisor, makes sense of investing. Experience the difference for yourself. Brad Wilson, 250 Sharon Drive in Woodway, 254-776-4337. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Don's Humidor, your home with a 48-foot walk-in humidor with the elite cigar brands from around the world, including the number one cigar of the year, Aging Room, Quattro Nicaragua. Plus, they have the great brands like Macanudo and Artur Fuente, Rocky Patel, Aston, and so much more. CBD, great for sore muscles, aches and pains, sleep, Vita Dreams and anxiety, mild depression, general health and wellness. Their staff, very knowledgeable on the subject. If anyone is curious about CBD, ask Carol and Ashley. Don Schumanor in the Talwood Shopping Center off Valley Mills in Waco. Shorty's Pizza Shack at 12th and Bagby is a homegrown, locally owned pizza place that's out of this world. Everything from the dough, the sauce, the sausage topping is made fresh in-house. Not to mention the amazing pizza pillows, the chicken wings are to die for, try the sickum sauce, chili cheese fries or tots, plus great specials on food and drink every single day. Shorty's is also the perfect spot to watch the game with your friends. Shorty's Pizza Shack at 12th and Bagby. Tell them Paul sent you by. Boozers is the wedding ring store and more. If you're ready to get engaged or already married and want to upgrade your wife's ring for a special anniversary, Boozers is the place to go. With the largest selection of premier quality diamond engagement rings and wedding rings in Central Texas. They have seven cases with over 300 styles of rings from top designers like Natalie Kay. Choose from yellow, white, or rose gold, plus beautiful top quality loose diamonds. With an in-house jewelry, they can also custom make anything you want. Bring in a picture or drawing and let Boozers create your one-of-a-kind pendant or ring. They can even use some of your old gold and diamond jewelry to create something new. At Boozers, you'll find a great selection of quality timepieces, and Boozers is the place for expert watch maintenance and repairs, too. They specialize in expert Rolex watch repair for fine jewelry, watches, custom work, and more. Go to Boozers on Valley Mills and Lake Air Drive in Waco. Boozers, the wedding ring store. This is 365 Sports. Are you a Sikkim 365 super fan? Then try out our premium subscriptions at Sikkim365.com. CBS Sports' Dennis Dodd, he joins us on 365 Sports. Yesterday, nothing to suggest new Pac-12 media rights deal is near within or with 15 months left on the current contract. So you spoke with Doc, uh, President Robbins, and you've done that before. Did you sense any change in what he was telling you this time compared to when you, when he had that kind of that TV or media tour two or three, four weeks ago? Yeah, not much. Um, just that I think he was let, you know, letting people know that it's going to be a while. Um, he still has faith in their ability to do a deal but there's a lot. There's a line in that story 
I think it says, uh, you know, the best way to sum up the Pac-12 situation right now is there's nothing close, but they are hopeful. So, yeah, there's there's not much there for the Pac-12 right now. That doesn't mean they can't do a deal. Doesn't mean they can't do a deal. It's lucrative, but it just doesn't look good right now, Smokey. Yeah, and, and it seems to me, and um, there was also a line that I circled. It said, it wasn't because I was emboldened because we have options. This is the last time he spoke. Um, there yeah. is no deal or no agreement where if everything blows up, we've got some place to go. Is that referring to the fact that there is no offer from the big? Well, I know that's a technical legal thing, yeah. but is he suggesting that there has not at least been, hey, we're here if you want us? In my previous story, now others have written about this, but in my previous story involving him, he said in the same interview that the Pac-12 is 95% united. And also that, hey, we could drive to Lubbock. Uh, we can fly to Oklahoma State in two hours. So I said, so I asked him, I just want to follow up and make sure you understand that this might have been interpreted as, you know, drawing a line in the sand for the Pac-12 saying, hey, if we don't get a deal, we've got options. And so what he is saying there, oh, no, 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 I never meant to say that. Um, but we know they do. Um, you know, Mark Yormark's been involved with at least those four schools. Um, you know, there's, there's varying levels of interest. I, I would say that absolutely Arizona has options. But I just wanted to get him on the record to, to comment on that because that was my take. That was certainly my take and a lot of others when that, that, that last story was out there. Did he reach out to you, or was this something you had been trying to get back in touch with him? No, I called him. I was just trying to get up to speed because, it, you know, there was nothing going on. Um, there are very – well, no, there's not, there was nothing going on. There, there, you know, I just want to make sure. Are we close? Can you give me a hint so I can plan my week? There's something going on. And what he left it at, it looks like it could be a period of months. For better or worse, uh, they're less than 15 months out until their deal expires. It's the very latest uh, uh, conferences engaged on their media rights 18 uh, months out. Now, that's with the caveat that, real quick, the Big Ten signed a deal in August. Uh, they had to wait for USC and UCLA to do it. Uh, their deal begins in uh, July 1st. Did you get the impression at all with visiting him with him that, you know, he has also mentioned that he, I believe, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that he does not want a large chunk of this to be streaming, although that's where it appears to be leaning if you listen to some of the other uh, sports business columnists and podcasts or whatever. And we've uh, had a handful of former network executives on. Has that changed uh, at all in your opinion? He told me that it's more than 50% linear, which means cable uh, and or broadcast. Um, I don't think there's a broadcast component to the Pac-12. Well, that would mean three broadcast uh, entities, NBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, and Sport. Um, I don't think there's that in play. So when I say linear, linear cable, he, he said it's more than 50% linear cable. Um, so there's two things there. They're not close, but what they have is more than 50% linear cable. That's almost saying two different things. But that's what he says because it's been out there that this is over 50% uh, streaming, way over 50% streaming. I've written that, um, which which is a deal. It would be a deal breaker for some of these schools to think of recruiting alone. Um, and he has refuted that. So he is, he's on the record of saying that. Okay, so if it's over 50% streaming, um, but the number beats the Big 12, and again, that's debatable. That seems like, for whatever reason, that's become like crossing the line in the sand or the turf war yeah, um, yeah. In, in many ways. And it, I, I, it, it kind of just, are you going to get a deal done? And, and, doc, and, and, and President Robbins seems to have been someone that uh, seems to be pretty well-grounded and really understand sports athletics and also the university. If it's 50% or yeah. plus streaming, but beats the big 12 number, but not much linear, is that going to force anybody to look at this and go, we cannot sign the grant of rights? 
yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I don't have the answer to that. I think that would be to be determined. Um, you know, the other question that needs to be asked is, okay, if that's the case, then how long is the deal? It was suggested on a podcast this week by Nick Khan. He's the mm-hmm. story. Nick Khan is the is uh, CEO of WWE. Well, in a previous fight, he was a very high, uh, high-profile agent and media consultant. He helped do the current for the next SEC deal. So he knows what he's talking about. And he said the best way they should go is a uh, skinny deal. In other words, a short deal. What he didn't say is how long that should be, or could the Pac-12 schools agree to that without a grant for price? Whether they do or not, you know, from my research, a rights holder is going to want something more than, let's say, three years. You know, because there's they want they want cost certainty, and cost certainty is being able to, you know, spread your commercials out over a period of years to get your money back, for lack of a better term, and to more subscribers. Um, and do you, would schools agree to a grant of rights? I was told that there would be no rights holder that would do this without a grant of rights because what's the point? If they school, any of these schools can leave at any time, what's the value of the contract to begin with? So it's really nuanced, really complicated. And in answer to your question, I, I don't know if I know that. So uh, aren't the shorter deals, um, uh, the longer the deal, the more the back part of the deal is where the big money is? So if it's if it ended up being that, and I know I heard, and we saw Nick Khan and what he said, Arand and also to Marshawn, but uh, like, it's yeah. like three years, I, is it like, for example, the last years of most five or seven years deal, isn't that where all the money is? Yeah, they're all, they're all structured. So the, the, uh, the payoff is at the end. In other words, it's small money at the beginning. It grows by a certain percentage every year, and then that's where you get that AAV, that that average annual value. Mm-hmm. Um, hear that referred to in player contracts and these kind of contracts. So it's, it's what they get in the middle. Like the Big Twelve right now, at the end of their deal, is getting uh, their current deal. I think they're all in numbers forty two point five million. That's a pretty good number um, with Texas and Oklahoma. They're going to get more than that without Texas and Oklahoma. We can get into that if you want. But, yes, they're all like that. And in, in response to your question, Smokey, if they did a three-year deal, you'd almost be negotiating for the next deal as soon as you sign. You know what right. I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It'd be real, like a year in, you'd already be talking about a new deal. And that's another reason probably why I write told I, I believe President Robbins is the one that mentioned April 15th, and then the article you wrote, yeah. he's about to be out of town for two weeks, would, would take it right up until that time, and then he's not a rush. And I, I've really enjoyed listening to him or reading his quotes. So yeah. um, is that no longer even a date? And secondly, is it better to get a deal done, done, or is it better to get the deal right? Uh, it's better to get the deal right, and that's what that's what the Pac-12 is saying. Um, you know, when, when you ask them or ask people surrounding them why it takes so long, it's better to get the deal, and that's what what they're hoping for. But this thing extends out. Um, you know, I, I don't know what they have right now. Uh, I, I don't think they have much. Everybody in the industry does. It. I don't think they have much. But does waiting make it more likely? When you got the fact that uh, what is Google, Disney, others are laying off people, that uh, ESPN is absolutely saving up to take a run at the NBA when it comes on the market. Uh, is that the right strategy, or do you think what the can? Uh, you mentioned uh, you know, Marshawn from New York Post a couple of weeks ago wrote that there was an offer on the table for the Pac-12 for Big 12 money. And the longer they waited, it was now off the table. Uh, so that, that begs the question, is the SDN even involved at this point? And if they're not, who is? What would you say? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you no, say? I just, I just, yeah. go ahead. What, what would you say, or have you been able to get a, a specific percentage of streaming is a number that's too high? Uh, no, I just know that over 50%. And this kind of answers your question. 
from before would probably be a deal. But I don't know that. If it's, mm-hmm. if it's ESPN Plus, well, that's streaming. You got the ESP brand on your product. The Big 12 has a bunch of streams on ESPN Plus, not 50%. Um, does that make it more palatable? Uh, you know, if, if, if Apple, as has been speculated, buys the whole thing, which they did for MLS. They, they paid them a bunch of money for 10 years of exclusive MLS content. You know, is that acceptable? That's only in the minds of those ADs and presidents. In consultation with their coaches, we're going to say, we're the only league like this, and how do people see us, and how do we recruit, uh, among other things. So, yeah. I, I'm still interested in what he had mentioned before about um, – being close to a deal and getting one done and 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 said that there had at least been that, like you mentioned, Lubbock and Stillwater and et cetera, and now it's not important. The timeline is not important. Do you feel like he's basically saying that to calm things down again? or Because there have been these back and forth. It's really almost gotten silly sometimes with these what people feel like are one PR firm after another, you know, going at each other. But it, yeah. it, 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 I would still think that you would want something to be done here by the time you get to the middle or again it's not my decision it doesn't affect me maybe more schools i cover in the end but it just that just seemed like that kind of changed a little bit well i, I definitely think he wants to calm things down um i also think president robbins likes to talk that's why i called him he picked up the phone there's nothing wrong with that mm-hmm. um it's, it's a whole heck of a lot better than what, what else is going on and you saw in this last you know, go around. I think the Utah president spoke. He didn't say much. Um, there may have been another. But, look, the most compelling person in this whole thing hasn't said a word and, and frankly, doesn't at all. Usually, Phil Knight at Oregon. I, I'm told he's like a, a, a duck, a, literally a duck, where everything appears to be calm above the water, but he's paddling like crazy below it, trying to find a home for, you know, a deal for Oregon. There's some about Oregon football, Oregon athletics, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know what the answer to that is. So he's not talking. Um, not many other people are talking. And so I, I will say this, that's led to this vacuum of speculation. So if the Pac-12 wants to complain about, uh, you know, the uh, propaganda part of this, there's one way to fix that Pac-12. You know, tell us what's going on. Yeah, Klyovkov hasn't said much lately either. Do you feel like that's kind of overrated because he's probably daily in touch or at least constantly yeah. in touch with the presidents of all the schools? Yeah, he said in the beginning he wasn't the same. He both, I mean, it's quite a lot of it. He's done a couple of podcasts um, that I would say were friendly to the Pac-12, and that's fine. But he, he stuck to his word. Um, I have reached out to the conference when I write something to say, hey, I'm writing this, you have comments, and it rises to that level. To be fair, and, and you know, they prefer not to, so that's fine too. Um, but people in the industry are, are saying, you know, they've been worked by Brett Yormark, and in, you know, we, we've seen it. I mean, physically, yes, out, physically outworked, and look what he's done. The new, the new deal may not be done yet. We know for a fact that he's out there trying to get So what does that mean for the Pac-12? Or is it beyond say I have, I have to think it's going to survive in some form. Mm-hmm. But I really have because it's the West Coast. But I really, I, I'm straining to see Stanford and Fresno State playing at the same conference. If you understand. You understand the culture of Pac-12? Oh, yeah. The remaining team, I, that just blows my mind. I can't see it. Dennis, have you heard anything about San Diego State being on the Big 12's radar? Yeah, they have been from the beginning. Um, and I've got a piece, I'm trying to, I think it's up, uh, at least so, where I just wrote, hey, what else does San Diego State have to do in the Final Four this weekend? And then there's a line in there. Actually, pretty high about the, the Big Twelve still being interested. Um, you know, I think I think on the State part may be interested, 
uh, if, if they're not happy with the Pac-12 deal. Now, the Mountain West schools only get $4 million a year. So whatever they get from the Big 12 or the Pac-12 is going to be more. Mm-hmm. I think we know that. Yeah, yeah. But if, if the Big 12 can offer more, uh, and it, may, it makes sense systemically travel-wise and everything else, I think they, they've got to be interested so I think it, you know, I think it's sensible to include them in that um, in that discussion because they're somewhat out of, kind of a hot item right now. Uh, you know, Southern California is a big hole in the back of the They don't have Southern California. Um, they could get it with San Diego State. What are they waiting for? We extend an invitation. Well, maybe San Diego State's holding out. To see what they can get from the Big 12. And this is all speculation, but 13 straight bowl games, uh, bowl eligible seasons, new stadium, uh, what, uh, number 30 market, I think. Um, obviously, what they've done in basketball has been amazing. Uh, and they're, they're about to go uh, research one, which is the highest academic standing to have at the school in this country. Uh, so it, it's never been better in San Diego State. Well, and I wish them well this weekend as well. Last thing, and I'm not trying to put you on a spot with any kind of prediction, but among the schools, once something is official, as far as there's an offer, the Pac-12 knows it, the schools know it, who would you say right now might be looking or glancing off to the east more than anyone else? I think the most likely candidate for the Big 12 right now from the Pac-12 are Colorado and Arizona. But look, uh, I've already written this with your marketing, but if he gets one, he can get the other three. So that, that speculation may be moved. If they are, depending on the Pac-12 deal, if he gets one to move, may say, well, you know, life's better over here. We may not, we may not like flying to Orlando or, you know, um, West Virginia, but it's the best place for us right now, and that's what's going to happen. That, that's what I think. I'm not saying. That. Yeah, right, right. And and, and obviously, I, I'm like you and. Craig and Paul, we've mentioned this before, that in the end, I just still feel like it will end up okay. The Pac-12 will remain intact, whether it's adding or not. You just kind of get that feeling because we've seen the Big 12, like, on the edge a a handful of times, and they always found a way to survive, and in the end, we'll see what happens. Uh Mm-hmm. What complicates it, Smokey, is that I keep telling people this the two biggest names on the border. Oregon and Washington, mm-hmm. because they at least perceive to have options, and they are the two biggest remaining brands in the Pac-12, not Arizona, not Arizona State, uh, Oregon and Washington, because they're football. Now, they're not worth a full share in the Big Ten, but at some future date, they become, let's say, available. I don't think it's going to happen right away. It could be a period of years where they become available and Big Ten presidents have experienced life with 16 teams. And they're looking at the travel to USC and UCLA. You know what? This would be a good travel partner. And they'll come in at half a share, maybe even less than half a share. And you got to believe at this point, Oregon and Washington would, would absolutely fall on broken glass to do that to get to Big Ten because that's a lifetime decision. That brands your school in perpetuity. But I don't think it's going to happen right away. It would have to fall for them. Uh, Kevin Warren, the commit outgoing commissioner, was pushing that for a long, long time and really pissed off a lot of people to believe. This would have to be uh, more nuanced than anything else. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Pizza, burgers, and Bears football. There's no place around Waco that serves them all other than Bubba's 33. Come show your green and gold and enjoy some of Waco's best food and beverages while watching your favorite team, the Bears. When real Bears fans get hungry, Bubba's 33 is the number one spot for ice-cold drinks, hand-stretched, stone-baked pizzas, and bacon-infused burgers. Join us for indoor or patio dining. Bubba's 33, Waco's restaurant and proud supporter of Baylor Bears football. Sick'em Bears. 
want to know why Stonewood Dental is so successful? Listen to what happy customers have to say. It's pleasant. It's different than any other dentist's office. I really feel like they care. And it's not that you're here for two hours waiting on someone to take care of you. It's quick and easy, and you know, I bring my kids, and my kids love being here too. They really love the treasure box. <laughs> Staff is really nice and accommodating, real friendly. You feel more like home, it's not sterile looking. Everybody has their own personalized rooms with decorations and decor, and they'll even have a blanket for you when it's cold. <laughs> I've recommended people to actually come here, and they are patients now. I really love it here. It feels like family. Learn more, stonewood-dental.com. At Ideal MRI, we feel blessed to be part of the Waco community. We're a small family business here in Central Texas. At times like this, the cost of health care has never been more important. And unfortunately, significant illnesses and injuries still occur. And that's why Ideal MRI is open and here to serve you through this difficult time. So if you need an MRI, ask your doctor about Ideal MRI. You can schedule online in minutes at IdealMRI.com or call 833-IDEAL-MRI. Custom Marketplace is your hometown grocery store with a full-service butcher shop and baker. Hi, this is David Smoke. The butcher shop can take your customized orders for seafood, pork, and poultry and custom cut your favorite steaks from bacon wrap fillets to T-bone to bone and ribeyes. Cut specifically the way you want. They have Norwegian salmon fillets, catfish fillets, sliced ham or turkey and lunch meat, variety of cheese available, and several options of sausage links. Fresh chicken breast or whole chickens, sliced bacon, pork chops, ground beef, marinated beef and chicken fajitas and always large briskets available plus fresh vegetables so the great product customer service and family tradition of the bauer family continues at waco custom marketplace open monday through saturday a full service butcher shop and bakery available waco custom marketplace 425 lake air drive in waco or waco custom marketplace.com Daniel Johnson Realtors guide you seamlessly through the process of buying your dream home or selling your current one, commercial, farm and ranch, or residential. Camille Johnson Realtors can smoothly and successfully lead you through any transaction with a team of 28 experienced agents who are excited about serving you. Camille Johnson Realtors services the entire greater Waco area. If you're in the market to buy or sell, contact Camille Johnson Realtors, 104 Midway Center in Woodway, or find them online at www.camillejohnson.com. Camille Johnson Realtors, elegant, charming, Warm. Welcome home. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. Enjoying the show? Hit the like button and subscribe. We will have Evan Weiner. He is an author and journalist, has been around a long, long time and covered various sports, but He's been in radio. Uh, he is uh, an author again. I think it's 12 books, but mainly the business of politics and sports and all that. Uh, and he'll join us today in uh, the 5 o'clock hour. But I, I saw this note and all this uh, about television media, and, I, and this is not about college football, but it can be. The Yes Network launched a direct-to-consumer subscription service that will broadcast all games featuring the Yankees, the Brooklyn Nets, and even the New York Liberty WNBA team. The Yes Network is to stream the games to fans in the greater New York area. Subscription cost is $24 per month, $239.99 annually. If you buy now, you will get a discount if you buy before the end of April. So of almost $5 a month, which is $60 or so maybe for the year, what is this in reference to the future of what we may see when it comes to sports and television? Well, this is kind of what the Pac-12 tried to do with their networks, and they kind of tried to own everything, and that it obviously didn't work out for them, um, you know, over the long haul because they didn't get distribution on linear cable. But the Yankees, the Yes Network, has created their own – like their own streaming service. So now if you want to stream the Yankees, you're not going through Major League Baseball. You're not going through anybody, but you are going through the Yes Network, and it's their own thing. Bally Sports Plus, 
um, is what has the teams that's struggling, the Diamond Sports Group, which is owned by Sinclair, which also has a piece of, of the Yes Network. They've got a piece of a lot of different things. But – Major League Baseball for is trying to get all those streaming rights back. They won't have it with Yes, and they won't have it with Nesson, which is where the Red Sox are. Nesson has a like a, even a higher price point as well. Um, but if you want to stream those games specifically, just that, then you have to go through them, um, or you could. Uh, and I think you could get the MLB.tv package, but that's the only way you can really get all that stuff now because they have the rights and they're going direct to consumer which is where a lot of things will eventually go you heard um you know espn talking about it like eventually espn plus is essentially what espn is going to be but uh, but yeah that's they're they're taking control of it and part of the reason sinclair is struggling is that like i said before major league baseball is trying to get back all these rights and they're they don't want to give them up because they don't really care about valley sports plus and they'll figure out a way even if it means Bally sports goes away. All right. I don't understand this enough, and, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, oh you go, old man here, but if you have cable in New York, are you saying you can't get the Yankees? No, you can watch it okay. if you've got that package. Okay. It's just if you want to stream it. So, like, if you've decided that you don't have cable and you want to stream, you still have you to can get, pay. Okay. You're still giving money to the Yes Network, no matter what. I remember in the day, and Jim Williams brought this up to me once, Craig and Paul, that Let's say, for example, I wanted to watch Nebraska, and this is back when they were relevant and winning and winning championships. There were the options because if they weren't, there weren't all the games weren't televised. But there was at the very bottom, like the lowest number, the highest number channel, whatever, you could have pay-per-view college football games. Like if Craig wanted to watch Oklahoma, I wanted to watch Nebraska, you wanted to, if they weren't on one of the networks, and there were a lot of games on, but not nearly as many as now, you could go watch, let's say, Nebraska against um, uh, Troy. It's a bad one to bring up because Troy beat them in Lincoln uh, during this terrible stretch. But if you wanted to watch that game, but it wasn't on regular TV, you could you could watch it for like 1995 or what was it? 40? I don't think it was ever above that. Like 29.95. Is that kind of what we're similar discussing here with this, with the Yes Network? Now that was per game, and they were on probably eight, nine, ten times. But a couple of games they played would not be available on ESPN or on South Fox Sports Southwest now Bally's. Isn't that kind of the same idea? Yeah, I mean it's just a it's figuring out a pay per view where you get more more for what you're paying. Although the the price points for the like Bally Sports is twenty six dollars a month, and Nesson is twenty nine a month, and Yes Network is you know two thirty nine for the year if you do it right now. So not really. I mean, again, to me, unless you are absolutely going to, you know, watch that a lot, I don't know if if that's necessarily worth it and. I'm a pro, like when the Red Sox are on, I'll watch them anytime. And I've, I had the MLB package for a long time. Um, I've, I've since gotten rid of it just because, you know, I, I don't get a chance to watch them as much and they're mediocre right now, which, which makes me mad. So I don't want to, you know, be yelling okay. at Chris Sale on the street. So I, I just, I don't have it, but yeah, I mean, everything you're paying, it seems like a lot for what you get, especially Bally sports. just didn't seem like it, it gave a lot. Uh, for you to pay that right now. That's what they're trying to get going anyway. Craig, anything on this? I mean, not really. I mean, it's it just ex he's explaining how streaming's working on uh, Nesson. I mean, I don't really have anything to, to add to that per se, no. So Nesson's a streamer too? Uh, I mean, it's the network that the okay. Northeast Sportsnet, that, that the yeah. Red Sox and, you know, they have a lot of Patriots coverage, the Celtics, the Bruins. Jemai Webster, our old friend well, Jemai works for yeah, them. Yeah, here's an example. Of, uh, this is part of the story. The pricing makes the service cheaper for, than the New England Sports Network, Nesson, which launched last year, cost subscribers twenty nine ninety nine per month for the Red Sox and Bruins games. Does not mention the Celtics. Yeah, I don't think they, they may not have the Celtics, but um, so, but yeah, I mean, they have Celtics games on it, I think, but maybe not on the streaming. And I, I don't know if it, it's, I don't think it was. Was it Shanks? Was it Iger? I know Shanks is with uh, what Fox and Iger with ESPN or Disney. They were talking about wanting to do more direct to consumer, and this is what they're discussing here. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, because that way, you know, uh, they're just trying to figure out how to get more money out of everybody every which way. Okay. That's all they are. All so, right. I got a John Wick 
number for you guys. Have you guys seen the, the newest one? No, I'm uh, I'm debating on whether it's going to go tonight or not. Depends on after I take care of Woodrow, how late it is. And then we'll... Craig, we'll I know you're a big fan of John Wick. Have you gone yet? Nope, I haven't gone yet. He's going to get about $15 million for this movie. Un underpaid. Underpaid. According to this article, and this is... Uh, I don't know what paper this was. He is getting, he doesn't say much in these things, does he? No, and apparently this one he says even less than he has in the other ones. He's getting paid $39,473 per word. He doesn't need to say much. It's not really a dialogue movie. No. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a punch of blood and guts. Yeah, it's not my dinner with Andre. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, apparently it's really good. That's all I know. I, I haven't gone to see it, like I said, but, uh, yeah, apparently it's it's really great. Maybe the best of all of them. I, I don't know. Uh, it depends on, you know, what you look at. But, yeah, there's rave reviews. It's the last one probably maybe ever um, because they were initially going to film back-to-back, -back and they didn't. Uh, they didn't film the fifth one right after the fourth one, so there is no fifth one, and there's no plans to film a fifth one right now. Uh, so, yeah, that might very well be the end, although, I mean, now we see stars desperately trying to reach back into, like, the 70s and recreate the magic they had back then. So, inevitably, you know, if John or if Keanu Reeves needs to make a buck, which I, I doubt happens, or if he just gets the flair to play John Wick again, then I'm sure any studio would line up and grant that wish. But uh, as far as the foreseeable future, uh, yeah, that might very well be the last one, but it sounds like they went out. Uh, if they did go out on a on a pretty high note because, yeah, I've seen nothing but rave reviews. And, you know, if you go to a place like Rotten Tomatoes, which is not the Bible of movie reviews, I mean, it's it's close to it, I guess, for a lot of people, but it's not necessarily like, like I don't always agree with it. You know, everybody's got their own taste ultimately, but it's like a 94% or something like that last I looked, which is pretty, pretty dang good. Um, so that says a lot. And – Everything I've seen, the people who have gone to see it absolutely loved it. So, yeah, it's, it's apparently great. I'm going to have to go do that. And, and by the way, Kialani goes, okay, if that's per word, how much would he get if it was per kill? Yeah, well, a lot be less. super diluted. That'd be, that that'd be like, you know, 38 <laughs> cents. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it, that's, but yeah, there's, there's, these, there's another John Wick movie in the universe that comes out, but it takes place in between three and four. Uh, and he's he's in it for a minute, but uh, was it the ballerina or whatever? Yeah. Uh, who's the star in that? Ana de Armas. Oh yeah. Who is? There's a scene with a ballerina, see. right? The, uh, yeah. When he's over in. She's he... really hot, but like I don't know how much her movies are like must. Like she did a Marilyn Monroe movie, which there's been little to none of, and I don't. Did anybody even watch it? And like, she got nominated know, for it. But did anybody yeah, see it? Like, did no. you hear anything about it after the trailer dropped? Like, no. It's a Marilyn Monroe movie starring Ana de Armas, and there's like zero. <laughs> about it unless you follow the academy um so yeah i mean she's i enjoy her uh, i think she's a you know a good actress and obviously easy to look at but um yeah she's she's gonna be the ballerina and that'll be interesting because i'm not i mean i love john wick doesn't necessarily make me be down for every spinoff to it but i'll definitely give it a give it a chance and and that plays into the storyline with you know, him being, what, Russian mm -hmm. uh, in his background, and, and they'll play off that. And I wonder if Angelica Houston will – I don't know. I haven't seen the new movie, so I don't know who is yeah. all still alive or not. Was but. she the mean Russian gymnast? Uh, no. Uh, uh, ballerina. Uh, ballerina? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. so we have this debate, and I know I'm going to lose this debate because most of our audience is smarter than I am. Who would win if John Wick, the equalizer – or Jason Bourne had a cage match. Well, I mean, it's going to be John Wick because John Wick, I mean, he has the, like, he's got the darkest background of all of them. It's like John Wick, then Jason Bourne, then the Equalizer as far as, like, the dark backgrounds. Your argument against the Equalizer has been that he actually died. In the last, right? No, he, there's no. an Equalizer 3 comes out in September. What? Yeah. I thought he went to go save that girl, no, walked he, across the bridge. No, that was that was this is why man on fire. It's, it's frustrating. Was well before having this conversation. Well before. Well before the equalizer. That's man on fire. That's a different okay. Denzel Washington is helping people out. Okay. Angrily. I still will take Denzel over anything. 
Denzel, yeah. Jason Bourne. It's like you're trolling with that conversation. I know you're trying to be funny and everything, but like that, there's no way you watch John Wick and go like, yeah, the Equalizer would beat that guy. I know it's entirely make-believe. The dude eats like 25 bullets at any given time, <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, yeah, that, that dude would totally oh, wreck him. In one movie, he cut off a finger and then got shot and fell off a building, and he's okay. Yeah, I know. He's yeah. had two more movies since then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's just, I, I'd give it to you if it was actually a f- real comparison, but it's not. All I mean, right. It's, well, it's, uh, it's I'm very sorry clear I that John Wick is is the, oh, the yeah. winner of that contest, no matter, you know, which uh, Denzel you're probably going to. Maybe there's some version of Denzel that, that trumps him off the top of my head. I can't think of one. But yeah, it's John not Wick's the one awesome. when he's running on top of trains. That's the one yeah. that embarrassed yeah. me too much. All right, when we come back, Evan Weiner, a sports journalist, author. He'll discuss uh, politics, the business of politics and sports, and all of that and more, and maybe even a story or two about John Madden. We'll find out. He'll be next. This is 365 Sports. Waco Custom Marketplace, your hometown grocery store, 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco. I was in there earlier this week to buy a couple of things. and In fact, I got some New York strip steaks. I normally, I get the big, thick bone-in ribeye, sometimes the occasional ribeye. And I got a, a some bacon that's cut real thick that's got some pepper on it. But I did buy, and the guy was walking out of the butcher shop, and I saw these New York strips. I said, my goodness, those look absolutely fantastic. Great for stir fry, maybe fajitas if that's what you want. And I got four of those. And he freezer uh, froze them and put them in these sacks, and I'll put them in my deep freeze, and I can take one out. I can't wait to have one of them. They're delicious. They have a butcher shop. They have a bakery that's constantly churning out sweets and treats uh, from cakes to cookie cakes to just whatever else, including fresh baked bread every day, kolaches every single day. Uh, the Bauer family, they run it. They do a great job with it. It's a hometown grocery store feel with a butcher shop and bakery at 425 Lake Air Drive in Waco. The future's bright. The time is now. College is what you make it. It's a late night pizza run and all nighters coding a new project. It's having big dreams and making them a reality. It's a professor who knows your name and your story. It's preparation for your future, your calling, your life. And at Baylor, it's even more. Baylor, where lights shine bright. During Ram Truck Month, get incredible deals on Ram Trucks at Allen Samuels in Waco. Come see why Ram continues to win awards year after year. Browse online or come shop the greatest selection of new car and truck inventory in stock today at Allen Samuels in Waco. Baylor Scott and White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics, the team physicians for Baylor Athletics, diagnosing and treating all sports-related injuries, including concussions. These specialists also provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike. Whether it's knee or shoulder pain, a wrist injury, orthopedic spine care, and even an arthritis and total joint clinic. Trust the doctors Baylor Athletics trust. Baylor Scott and White Southwest Sports Medicine Orthopedics wants to get you back in the game. With so many companies and policies out there, it gets so confusing shopping for insurance, and I never know if I'm getting the policy that's right for me. Luckily, I met the team at the Nitchy Group Insurance Agency. With the Nitchy Group, you can go to one company and get access to coverage options from many insurance carriers, and you get to speak to a real person about your specific coverage needs. With the Nitchy Group, I know I'm getting the right coverage at the right price. If you need insurance, talk to the experts at the Nitchy Group at 1-800-258-8302. Did you know that one out of every four men have symptomatic low levels of testosterone and don't even know it? And if you think you're too young to worry about it, guess again. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy, cause weight gain, and wreak havoc on your sexual desire and performance. Petty Clinic Low T can set up same-day blood screening and results, so if you're tired of being tired, I challenge you to man up and Google search Low T Waco or go online PettyClinicLowT.com. It's a private clinic with an atmosphere catering to men. Affordable, only $150 a month, includes lab work, office consultation, testosterone injections, follow-up visits compared to $395 dollars a month in dallas or austin and you don't have to fight the traffic petty clinic low t is board certified physician consultations will provide the best form of brand strength testosterone available contact petty clinic low t today just off highway 84 and old hewitt drive in woodway petty clinic low t helping men become the high performance men they deserve to be petty clinic low t.com or google search low t waco 
One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Cam Heathcott, your Edward Jones financial advisor, knows that his most important goals are yours. That's why we take the time to understand your needs, knowing you. That's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Cam Heathcott in Conroe at 936-756-7717. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Stepping into the boots of a U.S. Army officer can add confidence and leadership skills to your son or daughter's career path. See all the things they can achieve in our boots at GoArmy.com. U.S. Army Waco Recruiting Company, 254-598-8131 or 254-776-1543. This is 365 Sports, powered by Sikkim365.com. The 5 o'clock hour is brought to you by Edward Jones Investments and financial advisor Chuck Verno, who will navigate you through today's financial climate. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Now here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. Talk about a resume, a career... Evan Weiner, author, journalist, has actually been to the George Bush Presidential Library to uh, speak to foreign nationals about politics of sports and business in America. Uh, he's been a part of Westwood One with what he did with commentaries, also interviews for John Madden's radio programs for about 15 years. He joins us now on 365 Sports with Paul Catalina Craig and also David Smoke. Evan, thank you very much for making time for us. We appreciate your time. So you started your broadcast career at 15 years old? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at uh, WRKL, uh, Mount Ivy, New York, 25 miles north of New York City, the worst show that was ever done. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, Spring Valley High School, and uh, we did about 12 minutes a week. But, um, yeah, it, it was a door opener. And then at the same time, I was working for two newspapers, uh, the Nyack Journal News and the uh, Bergen Record, which were suburban New York City papers. And um, right place at the right time, I guess. Um, radio it was hot those days, so were the newspapers. And by the time I was 21, I was on WNEW AM radio, the home of the New York Giants. Mm. and um, doing news. So, um, yeah, I've been around for a little while. Evan, I know that uh, most of your expertise is with the NFL and the politics of that. I, I, I'm going to ask you later in the interview about Roger Goodell and Congress and how they got around this Washington thing, or if they ever will, uh, outside of the sale. But uh, this week we had the politicians getting involved in national name, image, and likeness in the college game. Uh, do you think this is something that they're even equipped to do or care about, or was this a favor to Charlie Baker? Um, they looked at it before. You know, I, I do a talk um, called Presidential Impact on Sports uh, in Society, and it goes way back to Teddy Roosevelt. With, in fact, it goes back to Andrew Johnson trying to knit the country together after the Civil War. Um, and he invited members of the Washington Nationals and uh, the New York, I think it's the Brooklyn baseball team. Politicians are always involved with sports. You know, take a look at um, stadium building. It's got to be approved by government. David Sturm, the NBA commissioner, once told me that uh, the number one thing you need to be successful is government support. Now, uh, Charlie Baker was one of them, governor of Massachusetts. The NCAA has no idea how to regulate this, uh, the NIL, and they're looking for help. So those people in Washington have no idea of how they're supposed to help them. Uh, is it a state issue? Is it a federal issue? And even if it became a federal issue, you might have some people screaming states' rights in you know, Alabama, uh, Louisiana, Tennessee. I mean, up here in the Northeast, it's not going to make any difference but the football factory so to speak um, you know you might have trustees screaming state rights uh if if it's all you know one federal legislation well, enough the feds have been involved 
with the U.S. Olympic Committee. Um, they were involved in giving tax exemptions to NCAA teams that play in bowl games. So I guess in, in the short answer is, yeah, they should be involved. But the longer answer is come up with a solution, and they're not, at least not soon. So what do you think would be the best pivot for those uh, in the NCAA? Is it simply just sitting down perhaps with the student athletes? And I'd imagine they'd be represented by, by somebody, agents, what have you, and just trying to come to terms on, an, on a mutual agreement? Well, you know, initially, a scholarship in exchange for your services back in 1954, 55, was actually a good deal because there was no money in college sports. So much money in college sports, but without the athletes, without the student athletes, the stars of the show, who's going to sit and, and watch Nick Saban on the sidelines? Um, the players of the show, not the coaches. Uh, without the players, you have no game. You know, maybe it's time to pay the players. Evan Weiner, author and journalist, again with us on 365 Sports. How have you, as you've seen gambling intersect now with sports at the professional level, even now the NCAA and tournaments, conferences having their tournaments in Las Vegas, is that almost like players not getting much for a long, long time from the NCAA and the dam broke? Well, um, yeah. I, I, well, the, the uh, Supreme Court in 2018 agreed with Chris Christie and the jury that there should be uh, gambling. But, you know, it, the, the, if you look at the court cases between 2011 and 2018, it was 2011 when the uh, state of New Jersey, voters in New Jersey said, uh, yes, it's for gambling. And the NFL sued. It was a free election. The NFL decided that it was not something they wanted. In fact, they did the same in Delaware a few years earlier. And um, it's amazing how, you know, thou shall not gamble has turned into, hey, we'll have um, uh, sportsbooks open at the uh, various stadiums during the game. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you have mobile as well. Um, a bit hypocritical. Look, everybody's making money off the game. Maybe not. Maybe not necessarily the uh, the license holders uh, aren't making as much money as they thought, but certainly the owners are, and it's trickling down to the players. And some of the players could actually now uh, make money uh, by selling gambling. Um, yeah, it's it's a revenue stream, it's like everything else in sports. Um, you know, it makes money, so it's okay. You've written a bunch of books. The business and politics of sports is almost like a series, and I've, I've, I've yeah. looked at them and combed through them uh, because I just got to know you just a couple of days ago. What uh, is it almost like something comes to your mind and it's a different part of sports, business, and politics? And, and is that a passion of yours as being a writer too? Well, it came about, well, uh, I got when when radio, uh, the initial wave of radio uh, cut that, um, when the FCC changed rules and you didn't have to have newscasts at the top of the hour and all, mm -hmm. looking for books, and I ended up in stringing here in New York. And, um, you know, it was the uh, baseball uh, strike that was 81. Then it was the NFL strike in 82. And then in 83, there was the NBA, which eventually ended up with the drug testing and the salary cap. Uh, 84 was an Olympic year, so we were off. 85, there was another baseball strike. And then the mother of everything for me was covering the USFL, NFL uh, antitrust trial uh, every day for six weeks in lower Manhattan in 1986. And that's where I really got my education, really got my education now. Okay, yeah, this is entertainment to most people, but to the people who are in the sports industry, it's a business. That's all it is. It's a cold uh, business. Uh, then there was 87. There was the um, NFL strike. In fact, uh, if you ever see the documentary The Life and Times of LT, um, 
I'm walking with LT in there, and you can see me with LT asking him questions. And then uh, I asked the question about who's your loyalty to, um, Giants fans as well as to Mara or to your paycheck, uh, which is right in the middle of that. And then uh, 86 is when the Tax Act uh, reform uh, was passed, which allowed the owners to uh, get stadiums and under the right deal they get 92 cents out of every dollar generated in the stadiums and that's what caused all the expansion that came up afterwards so i was there uh, and that's that's when you know i i learned all this stuff and nothing has really changed since then why is it that uh, it appears at least and maybe it's changing i don't know but when the nfl strikes the owners win when Major League Baseball strikes, maybe in the end, I don't know, it seems like to me the players run that deal. Well, as Jim Burke, who played with the New York Giants in 1987, was coming back into the tunnel uh, after uh, the players folded, he said, well, you know, we're football players. We're used to be beaten over the head. What I never understood is contracts are guaranteed in all the other sports leagues. But for some reason, it is okay for the NFL to not guarantee contracts. And for the life of me, I just don't understand it. Um, but that's the way it is. These big guys got cut. They just got cut. They didn't get paid. Now they get some severance. Uh, the pension plan is awful. Uh, there's no guarantee. And yet, you know, they keep signing these contracts. I just don't get it. Uh, I didn't get it in 1982. I didn't get it in 1987. They've gone to court. Um, the NFL owners still are basically, the players never win. They never, ever win. Seems to me they always get hung up on a side issue, like practices, or we'll give you this many more games if you take away this thing, and then that's how the deal gets done, but they, they don't really get what they – they should have gotten out of the deal. Well, it's always about money. Um, you know, I, in one of my books, I forgot which one it was, and I talked to Harry Carson, uh, who is the linebacker with the Giants, now the late Dave Jennings, uh, about the 82 and 87 uh, strikes. And, and their whole thing was, well, we got the money. We're getting some free agency, and that was the big deal. But. But, as I pointed out to Harry Carson, who had a long career, uh, most players, they're done in two years, the majority of players, um, or three years, and uh, they don't make big money. And as Lee Steinberg once pointed out to me, the guy that, you know, he had all the quarterbacks and all that. But, you know, guys, the seventh-round pick, at the minimum, has to basically have two homes, has to hire his own trainer, uh, or whatever, or for whatever they're doing, and um, when you, uh, it's always about money. That's it, and how to divide the money. They until recently, they didn't even worry about benefits and pensions. I, I've talked to uh, guys over the years. Uh, I'll give you an, uh, one. I'll, I'll name one guy, Cornell Gorbin. He was uh, part of the 1968 New York Jets uh, Super Bowl team. He sent me an email. It's about 11 years ago now, sends me an email. He says, how can I get the NFL to buy me an air conditioner for my uh, room? I, said, I don't know. I said, call the NFL PA. That's how pathetic some of these emails I've gotten from, from, from people. And, and also with the brain damage as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, what was the, the guy? Oh, I can't the guy who, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. His son plays for Cincinnati he's defensive back in New Orleans who uh, there was some really nasty stuff going on with him and his wife and uh, his wife called me and I said hey, this is not something for me um, and I, I latched her up with, with somebody who was dealing who, who was dealing with that type of thing she said don't you get involved with this at all I said I wasn't planning to so uh, yeah I mean there's a lot of post-career stuff that they don't take care of. Uh, with, uh, in fact, and, and I want to go. I don't want to belabor the point, but one of the players um, told me that uh, the NFL, um, that former players, 
the estimate is that uh, the uh, that we taxpayers through Medicaid pay former NFL players about a billion dollars a year to take care of them. Well, and that was a fight for a while, wasn't it, Evan? That, that uh, so, uh, we, we used, when we were at Super Bowl Radio Row, probably fifteen or twenty years ago. Uh, you know, we we where there's two different things that are kind of a passion: the wounded warriors for those who served our country, but the other one was gridiron greats, Mike Ditka, and some of them yeah. got heavily they're, involved. They're still out there. So when the concussion stories began and they started to figure out CTE. How much did yeah. that scare the hell out of Roger Goodell in the NFL? Goodness. It didn't. Um, they, they're, they're still, and the NCAA, the two of them, uh, are still saying that there's still no definite link between uh, concussions and uh, CTE. Um, you know, there's only suggestions it might. Uh, but they're still sticking to the, um, well, you know, we, we haven't seen the uh, link between the two. And there's still the, um, the, the Jets doctor, Elliot Perlman, who uh, was not an expert on brain injuries, was the NFL's go-to guy in terms of telling the world, oh, don't worry about the brain injuries, there's no link. And and Goodell uh, was it this year or last year said I don't see any link. Well, of course he's going to say I don't see any link. And they basically uh, Amala, uh, Dr. Bennett uh, Amala, they probably they basically marginalized him. And what what cracked me up is that uh, how the NFL just swept this thing under the table and was just totally forgotten. He came back with two of this year, but it's not really around. I mean, uh, it's it's. Uh, you know, Tua gets, you know, gets hit and all that other stuff. Yeah, it's a concern for about three minutes. And, oh, it's time to move on to whatever else we're moving on to. Yeah, I was going to ask so, you about that. In fact, with the NFL, they're really good about act. – I'm not trying to say that they don't care, but it does seem like they're really, really good about positioning themselves to care about a lot of causes, and I don't know if they actually do. Oh, they don't care. They don't care. Uh, initially, the book I was going to write, which is um, which I did write, America's Passion, Coal Miner's Game. Initially, um, I was going to name the book, and I should have cash on. Everybody pays cash, cash on the barrel head. That's it. That's all they care about in the NFL. Cash. They, they don't care about anything else. Yeah, they're undefeated with that. that. Evan, with the the commander sale probably impending, you know, coming up. Did that finally come about and they get rid of Daniel Snyder because he was messing up the money train, not because of anything morally reprehensible he might have done because Congress was in, involved and, you know, all these things are going on, but they didn't say a word about it for the 25 years he owned the team until he started messing up the money train. Uh, you know, the history of the Beach Boys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mike Love and, and – uh, Brian Wilson and the uh, album that never came out, Smile. Uh, and Mike uh, Love said, uh, don't mess up the formula. Mm -hmm. There we That's go. What's all about? Don't mess up the formula. You know who else, else told me that once was Fuzzy Zeller. And this was 40 years ago in uh, the PGA. And um, he said, Arnie, Arnie Palmer and, and Jack Nicholas came around and basically gave him the riot act that we're all independent contractors here. We're all making a lot of money. Don't mess it up or I will get you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's basically the NFL. Um, don't mess up the, the money train. And, um, you know, um, they've done a really good job with that. Um, you know, they get rid of the, the people they need to get rid of, whether it's Lennon Toast or now Dan Snyder, but it took a long time. I think that uh, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes over there. Uh, I, I suspect that um, they uh, finally, uh, they got, they were told you got to get rid of him or it's going to impact the money trade. And it did a little bit with, uh, uh, with the name change and all that other stuff. Um, but uh, don't, don't mess up the money train. You mess up the money train. We're going to get you. 
you had some quotes, uh, and this is part of me when I was researching to, for the segment today. And uh, again, Evan Weiner with us, author and uh, journalist with us on 365 Sports. It was, you were at a class, and I don't know where the class might have been, but you, you do this a lot. Students, uh, on a Sunday when you watch football, are you watching a game or is it entertainment? And you brought up a friend of yours in Sonny Werblin. What did he yeah. teach you about what okay. really a game is about when it comes to kind of the, the money now that we see the NFL bringing in or any sports for that matter? No, it wasn't Sonny. It was the guy who worked for Sonny. Although okay. I do did know Sonny, in fact, uh, to go to YouTube and watch my wife singing uh, National Anthem at Madison Square Garden back in 39 years ago. Sonny sent her a great letter uh, about, you know, you're welcome here at any time. And Howard Cosell came up to me, and I was friendly with Cosell. He says, I understand your wife says warble a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, wasn't Sonny. Uh, or, or it was a guy named Shelley Saltman who worked for MCA, and Sonny was at MCA. MCA was Lou Wasserman, and they uh, sent programs to NBC in the late 50s, early 60s. Sonny was uh, Elizabeth Taylor's uh, PR guy, uh, PR guy, uh, and Johnny Carson, and uh, or kind of the, the manager PR guy, whatever the two. And when Werblin got the jet, when he got the Titans, the New York Titans, uh, from Harry Wismer out of the bankruptcy. Um, he, uh, he was connected to TV, and he told people like Lamar Hunt and others, uh, you have a football game, uh, but you don't. What you have is three hours of entertainment, and you have to spend and create stars um, for the three hours of entertainment. He said, it's entertainment. It's not a game. For the guys who play, it's a game. But for everybody else, it's a form of entertainment. And Sonny was the guy, of course, he had the TV background. And you look at the NFL guys in those days. It's George Hallett. Uh, there was um, Art Rooney, Mara family. And those guys were not visionary. They, they, they lack any vision. But Lamar, um, Lamar was good with the AFL, wide open football. But when Sonny got there, he sat them all down and said, listen, this is entertainment. It's not a game. If you want to call it a game, you're wrong. It's entertainment, and this is how you make money off of it. And Sonny got uh, the AFL, the big deal from David Sarnoff, and with that, he went out and signed Namath, and, and the league signed a whole bunch of players, and Al Davis went after quarterbacks and all. They understood. Al Davis understood from all his football things. It was entertainment, the vertical game. And it was Sonny who, who basically sold the AFL owners on the fact that um, it was entertainment. And also, the AFL, all their teams shared TV revenue from 1960, and Roselle had convinced all of those guys in 61, 62, we have to pull our money. That's the way we're going to make it big. And uh, so it was the AFL, Sonny coming in there and just basically – pushing it, saying, let's do the entertainment. Sonny, Namath told me this. Uh, Sonny told him, you're going to be out in the town. And um, you know, football players weren't out in the town. You're going to be out in the town. You're going to get publicity, good, bad, or indifferent. You're going to get publicity, and pe you're going to get people's attention. And he did. And you know, Namath, Namath was the AFL when they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, Super Bowl was, three. Yeah, he was. And, and that all came out of Sunday. Which league, and, and Evan, we, I, I know we got to go, but which league has done the best job of selling entertainment rather than the game? NBA Entertainment. That's what it's called, NBA Entertainment. Don't have to say anything more. NFL's done a great job. David Stern was an absolute visionary. He, one day, that's 25 years, well, yeah, about 25 years ago. And he said to me, you know, one day you're going to be watching our product on, on your telephone. I get out of here. He said, no, you will. And about uh, seven years later, I said, David, I owe you an apology. And he looked at me and said, you apologize to me? I said, what, hell is over? <laughs> I said, no. David taught me an awful lot. David was the one who taught me a lot about how the business operates. And I said, no, you said I'm going to be able to watch game on a telephone and watch game on telephone. 
Um, NBA and David was so far ahead of anybody else in, fact, in selling that stuff. Bird Magic, Larry Bird, Magic okay. Johnson, Michael Jordan, now LeBron. Yeah. yeah, Kobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, but if you look at the NBA, it's history. It's, you go back to George Mikan and the Lakers' birth. It's always been that way, uh, with the exception of Celtics. Uh, Wilt Chamberlain, David Brooks, Goliath. Um, so, you know, David once said, it's, it's, well, this goes back a long time. Some of your listeners may not even know there was a show called The Ed Sullivan Show way back when. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, David said every night, we, you know, Celebrity Row, that's The Ed Sullivan Show. And you stay in our audience tonight. Um, and then David, in uh, way back when, said, I'm going to have 29 or 27 Disney World. Actually, he stole that from Vince McMahon. 1984, Vince McMahon told me about wrestling. He said, my goal is to make every event like it's an event at Disneyland. This is before he hit the big time. And, um, and David said the same thing. It's Disneyland. That's what we're selling. Evan, I, I appreciate your time. Do you want to end with one you have a, a john madden story that's your favorite can't repeat it <laughs> yeah you can yeah you can we're on youtube you can <laughs> oh oh no i i can't do that but i can tell you that <laughs> I can't. no i can't it, it, okay it was, it was funny as hell but uh I, you know i i can't do that to john and it was told to me and in, in in private um but um his favorite sandwich was mustard and uh, ketchup on uh, rye bread uh mm. I, I do have a story i do have a story uh we're at the arizona biltmore this is what, 94 95 96 somewhere in there we're at the arizona biltmore and murdoch and fox just landed the contract the year before so it's gonna be about 94 and of course, John is the face of the NFL on Fox. And um, so we're at the Arizona Biltmore, and I'm hanging out with him and Matt Millen, the three of us are together. And um, Murdoch leaves, and they leave John uh, as the MC of the night. And there's synchronized swimming going on as one of the, the party things that's going on. He's going to introduce a band, he's going to do this, this, and this. And uh, he uh, looks at me. And then he sees the two women who are performing synchronized swimmer. And he looks at me and he's talking to these women because he's trying to get some background on them. And he says, uh, you two actually swim together. Yeah. You do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, I said, John, I said, John, that is why it's called synchronized swimming. Because they're doing everything in you. <laughs> he did. <that. laughs> oh, I love it. Evan, so, uh, thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, hopefully down the road we can get you on again. It's, it's a trip down memory lane, especially for someone. I'm 63. But a lot of great stuff, including uh, what our chat room, when you mentioned, when I said how much did it scare the hell out of the NFL with concussions, and you said not at all. There was a lot of reaction of wow, wow, from a lot of different people. We appreciate your time. Great stuff and yep. continued luck with what you're doing too. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Evan Weiner, author and journal- journalist here on 365 Sports. Appreciate the feedback from those of you in the chat room and also a couple uh, of the questions we had. I uh, It took all the fiber I'm being on to hijack and ask all about the uh, USFL. Well, uh, maybe NFL next trial. time. Yeah. Next time, I just because it's always a fascinating thing to me because the business decisions that were made in that – and not just by, I mean, like, the famous one is Donald Trump kind of took control. He was the loudest voice in the league and convinced him to go head-to-head and move off the spring, and he thought that that was going to kind of force the NFL to finally give him a franchise, which they they, they haven't done and, and, and never did. Uh, and they wound up winning the, the lawsuit but losing o- overall uh, in, in all of that. Uh, but it wasn't just that. I mean, like, that was the that was the big, you know, titanic so to speak into the iceberg but the path to the iceberg was laid well before that in that you had some owners that knew what they were doing you know and then you had other ones that couldn't pay their bills and teams that had to move a year after they were in a different city and you know that like it was it was absolutely crazy and ridiculous and i love any kind of usfl story i can hear because it was such a bold crazy wonderful 
experiment that was also crazy and terrible and bad in so many regards, just um, sports and business and everything involved. It's uh, football it, bar it's for a only, buck. Buddy. It's the only non-NFL professional football league that I actually pay attention to for an extended amount of time mm. that first year when you had – uh, the great names that were a part of it, Steve Young, Jim Kelly, um, uh, Kelvin Bryant, Herschel Walker, among many, many others that were a part of that league. All right, we have a brand new sponsor with our show, Texas Beef House, located in East Texas. Where is the best beef in Texas? Your house. When you order from Texas Beef House, unleash the flavor of Texas raised Wagyu from our pasture to your plate, TexasBeefHouse.com. I have been on the phone throughout the week with Aaron Duvall. They will be sponsoring Paul's Top 5, effective on Monday. Really, really love the fact we have another new sponsor adding to our show. Thanks to Aaron Duvall and the family at TexasBeefHouse.com. This is 365 Sports. In our logo and advertising, we say we are people that you can count on. What does that mean? It starts with providing a quality vehicle and quality service at a fair price. But it also means we do what we say we will do and we treat people fairly with respect. It starts by hiring great people, good local folks who work hard with a caring attitude. Our employees are the real reason we are people that you can count on. Put us to the test and see for yourself that at Richard Car Motors, we are people you can count on. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texas are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB, your bank for life. Member FDIC. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, over 600,000 words in the dictionary, and just three of them said together can change everything. Let's order pizza. Those three words lead to dough made from scratch and three fresh signature cheeses that blanket golden crust in a heavenly melt on Marco's Pizza that'll blow your mind. So visit Marco's.com to order and stop by Marco's Pizza in Bellmead, China Spring, Woodway, and in Robinson. Marco's. Pizza lovers get it. Riverman Liquor and Wine, Lake Shore Drive, North 19th Street, right behind the bank, is a hidden gem in Waco. If you're a fan of bourbon, especially local Texas bourbons, that's where you gotta go. Balcones, TX, Devil's River, whatever it is, they've got it. Riverman Liquor and Wine, plus the best selection of craft beers in Waco, seasonally churned out throughout the year, whether it's spring, summer, fall, or winter. Riverman Liquor and Wine, best selection of craft beers, a speedy drive through window, an excellent customer service find out more on instagram or just go by and see them lakeshore drive at north 19th street behind the bank one size fits all that may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy ben erlinson your edward jones financial advisor knows that his most important goals are yours that's why he takes the time to understand your needs knowing you that's how edward jones makes sense of investing ben erlinson 100 north 6th street in waco 254-759-8533 edward jones member sipc in Texas, there's pea-size hail and baseball-size hail. Guess which one hit our house? We didn't even know where to begin, but we called our Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent, and he was so reassuring. He knew exactly what to do to get our house back into shape and our lives back to normal. Now, we're even more thankful for the roof over our heads. Stop by and see our agents at one of our three McLennan County locations. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. This is 365 Sports. Want more updates during the day? Follow 365 Sports YT on Twitter. Appreciate Evan Weiner for being a part of the show. Garrett asked a question, sent me a text, and I didn't get it in time. And I sent him, by the way, your question, uh, Garrett. Uh -huh. I said, thank you very much for the time. What are your thoughts about Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark? And what he's done in such a short amount of time. Does he remind you 
of anyone who has been a commissioner of a pro league. You had mentioned Stern. Bulldog yeah. like David Stern, and uh, we'll see if we can get some sort of answer from him if we possibly can uh, before the end of the show. Paul, UCLA, they have hired Coach N. Can it? Niamatololo uh, is uh, now going to be the Bruins director of leadership in the position. Uh, he's going to serve as an advisor to the staff and the student athletes. This is, you know, one of those one year hitch things where I'm sure it, look, having this guy on your staff is going to be great for anybody who gets him. Cause he's an excellent, excellent football coach. Uh, I wonder where he lands. And I wonder if when he is a head coach again, and he absolutely should be a head coach again, if he runs the option again, or if that was just something he did because he was at a service academy, because he's a really good coach. And, you know, he was at Navy for a long time. And sometimes you're just at a place for too long and you need a, a fresh start. But next coaching cycle, if I'm a team especially that needs someone who can reorganize things a little bit, um, I will compare him to, at least on a smaller scale, his ability to do what Brian Kelly is doing right now at LSU. LSU would never have problems getting people, uh, good players to go there. Never. Under any coach. You could hire the staff, like the five of us in this room could go be the staff at LSU and we could get good players just based that we're at LSU. Hey, you want to come here? Here's some NIL money. Like the, the ins and outs of that are not difficult at a place like LSU. What Brian Kelly is there to do is to make LSU consistent to where it's not once a decade, you have this great run and then you're picking up the pieces for the next nine years, or you can't figure out why you can't get a quarterback, but you can get everything else. Brian Kelly knows how to do, be the business of a coach. He knows how to be the administrator of a coach and, you know, organize things. And I think that's where Ken Neomatololo will help at UCLA and where he will help ultimately in a program where he winds up next uh, is that, you know, somewhere that needs to learn how to do it on the other things other than the field, like how to run your day-to-day -day life. I think that's where he would really help a program. That's where he's, I think, going to help UCLA. He made Navy hard to beat. Didn't mean they could win or run the table, but he made them hard to beat. And the, the run that they had against Army – until Army found their guy was astonishing because I've been watching Army-Navy football since the 60s, and it usually was more of an edge for the Army. But uh, Niamh Matololo came in and, I mean, took over and just crushed that rivalry. And now Army's, I think, won, what, three of the last four, four, four of the last five or four of the last six or so. But, uh, yeah, uh, he's done a great job, I hope. Yeah, you wonder if this is kind of like a stop for him. I'm oh, sure it coaches. is. Yeah, I think he's got it. I think he needs to be a head coach again. I think he needs to be a head coach again next year. And I'm going to say, like, look, Navy Navy to the power five is not something that would would always happen. But I do think that, you know, if there's a power five job open, I, I would certainly consider him for it, you know. Um, but like you said, and Craig, what Paul mentioned was, would he run – the same offense, or did he run that offense because he was at a middle, military academy and that was just the best – that's the best fit for those schools? I don't know. What's his background? That's I a mean, great question. I mean, that's that's where we could start. I don't know off the top of my head. So, um, Well, he was a part of that staff for a long, long time. Let me – Right. So, I'm going I mean, straight it's, to his Wikipedia It's curly page. ingrained, but, I mean, I don't know what his other yeah. experience is as far as, like, if there's something like some high school job he had or some college – internship that he had that he learned something different but yeah it pretty much seems like that's his He's mo only and, at navy well, after being yeah. in hawaii yeah. so yeah that's his thing well, he and, was in hawaii as a ga for quite a long time one year or two years at unlv but most of his career has been a, a, a 90 percent of it has been with the naval Academy. that's your question then yeah that's pretty much his his mo so yeah i think that if you sign up for the neo matalolo experience you're signing up for all that that entails and you're not getting a spread guy <laughs> i mean and besides, if you wanted a spread guy, there's a hundred other coaches that you could go who are directly pumping that into their veins on a, you know, daily basis through Texas high school football or through, you know, the college ranks or whatever. So, yeah, he had a good run. Um, it was, you know, time to, to go a different direction, and you could kind of feel that there towards the tail end. But I think that, um, you know, he clearly made his, made his mark and uh, is a guy who uh, did a, a great job for that, for that institution, for that academy, and, 
um, won some big games for them, and yeah, it was a problem for a lot of folks. So when I thought that I saw where he was at Hawaii, what do you think about Hawaii and what kind of offense they have usually run? Well, that pass happy, right? But yeah. Paul Johnson was uh, the offensive coordinator in Hawaii, and he ran the option, the option oriented offense, and that's where he then went from Hawaii to Navy. Well, and it was in the eighties and nineties, like no. late eighties, yeah. early nineties. So but, that so that's that's been his bread and butter has been the option-oriented type attack. Uh, and, and and so if he was to get another head coaching job, you wonder if that would be – you go with what you like. You go with – Paul Johnson's going to run the option. I mean, that's I the Paul question, Johnson though, was really good. about why – I mean, if he did it for this reason, that reason, he clearly did it because that's what he knows, but clearly who else runs stuff like that outside of the service academies? Very few. I mean, very Georgia little. Georgia Tech yeah. did when Johnson was there. Yeah, but they're also unique in their own right. Mm-hmm. Of, you know, so, like, yeah, that's not something that's going to take over college football again. Those days are done and dead and over, but there is a place for it in, you know, um, various uh, ways uh, through the Surface Academy teams or through a Georgia Tech or through, you know, team here or there. Um, but, yeah, that's that's – you know, not the not the norm by any means uh, these days, and hasn't been for quite but, some time. But he is going to work for Chip Kelly. So do you work for Chip Kelly for a year and then become that administrator, and then just the assistance? It's on you. Where all right, we're going to run a modern offense. It's just I was at Navy for a long time. This is what I'm going to yeah. do. Yeah. So I think that would have to be the pivot he would have to make. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that'll be that'll be great for him. I'd imagine to break out of that shell and get some more experience and uh, some different eyes and different uh, mentor uh, or you know teacher there in Chip Kelly, who's clearly had a massive impact in his own right on modern offenses. And so yeah, that's a that's an interesting move. Um, especially when, you know, the head coach is an offensive guy. It's not like you're, you know, you're going to be the one calling the shots per se. It's kind of like with uh, Dave Aranda the defense. Like we give Matthew Pouch credit or we give Ron Roberts credit, but we know it ultimately falls on, on Dave Aranda, you know, at the end of the day. And I'd imagine it's something like that with Chip Kelly. But, yeah, that'll be a fascinating uh, pairing and uh, should be great for him and, and evolving as a coach and just learning more, um, you know, of the – the offenses that are out there. Here is a list of those who currently run some sort of option-oriented offense. Navy since 1970. Um, let me see here. Wofford since 1988. Rice, nope, they stopped back in 05. Those who still run it. Nevada, they run it out of the pistol. Army, the Citadel, there's another military academy. Auburn? No. That's what's said here. It's Coastal Carolina is the spread option. Okay, now you're getting into the spread option. But uh, so there you go uh, with, with that. But it mainly the Army, Navy, Air Force is now, they, can, they run it, the veer, the wishbone, the flexbone, but they damn sure look like a, a pass-happy team against Baylor in the bowl game. <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I mean that, oh. that's that's a game that happened um, basically. I mean, great for for Air Force, but uh, not really notable outside of that for anybody else involved. Uh, so yeah, I think the question is just how does he benefit Chip Kelly? I mean, not less about Ken Niamatololo uh-huh. and what he does or whatever. I mean, he's getting hired. So, and I didn't catch the first part of what you are you are mentioning there, but yeah, I mean, this he's is the leadership coach or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I came in mid-combo, yeah. so that, that's, yeah. Um, that's that's interesting from a Chip Kelly perspective of what is he hoping to glean from from that insight and that, you know, advising uh, that he's expecting from Nia Matalolo. So, yeah, I mean, Chip Kelly's a, a mad scientist, and he's done some good things already with UCLA. So, uh, yeah, curious how uh, Ken N uh, can, can help contribute to that and maybe what new wrinkles that brings to the offense. By the way, uh Thank you. Kim Coulter, large Texas beef house order has been placed to Arizona. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Awesome. Our Thank newest you, sponsor, TexasBeefHouse.com, the Wagyu beef. And we appreciate that. And we had a question about do they believe, do they deliver to Florida? Again, we'll have all that information. Go to TexasBeefHouse.com. And I got a feeling they may even accidentally send us a box. But Garrett can't get anything else anymore with food Ooh. because he turned down my beef casserole, my beef and rice casserole. I did not turn that down. You threw it in the trash. You told me to. I know. Katie Rader, $12 super chat. First round of adult beverages on us. Thank you. Thank you for a great week of shows, Katie. Texas Tech fans are pumped with the Grant McCaslin after it's been a very dismal year in basketball after a nice stretch that they've had. They're very excited about the Grant McCaslin hire. 
which will be, he'll be introduced, I think, sometime, I think is on Monday. I think you'll be introduced to Texas Tech's uh, fans base, nation, and everyone around Lubbock, Texas. When we come back, Paul Catalina's top five. This is 365 Sports. Alan Samuels, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram, Fiat. Right now, they have a large selection of new and used vehicles. Not everybody has a lot of vehicles at all. And there are some that still, because of COVID and distribution, although everything looks really good, uh, they have a lot of pre-owned cars, 90 of them available. Interest rates are rising. Come by, take advantage of 0% off. Zero interest for 72 months on select models. Good, clean, pre-owned vehicles. If you have one, they need them. And also putting top dollar in trade-in highly motivated deals for you. So that's an opportunity for you to trade in and get something even better. Weather warming up the 2023 Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator with the top-down fun with those new vehicles. And also take advantage of the Dodge Last Call event, getting yourself a high-performance 2023 Dodge Chrysler uh, excuse me, Dodge Chrysler, Dodge Charger or Challenger. I think I hear some of them going up and down the street on Lakeshore a little bit late at night. I hope they're okay. Ram Truck Month coming to a close right now, the last month of uh, the last day of March. Rebates up to 10% off of selected models. Ted Teague, the general manager. AJ's a great uh, sales rep. He does a great job. And they are loaded up with cars. They want yours if you have pre owned and maybe something they have that you want. Loop 340 and east of 84 in Waco. I hate my job, but I don't mind getting up in the morning. I try to stay, but I can't wait to get out of bed. You ask me why, and what I'll say to you is true. Well, you can get breakfast tacos at Rudy's Barbecue. Scrambled eggs and brisket, they ain't fooling around. Salsa drap sun, they're the best in town. Barbecue for breakfast, yes, it's true. Put a smile on your morning at Rudy's Barbecue. Next in line. Three Nations Brewing Company has 16 different beers on draft with a new beer every Friday. It also offers two air-conditioned tap rooms, a large indoor beer hall, a second-floor mezzanine offering a great overview of the brewing company and equipment and patio where you can relax under the shade. Plus, you can now experience the new Three Nations Beer Garden Grill on our shaded patio. Grab a cold beer and enjoy a bite from our freshly prepared and delicious menu. Street tacos, quesadillas, freshly cooked burgers and dogs, and veggie burgers, too. Nachos and and so much more all prepared and cooked on site. So come visit the award-winning Three Nations Brewing Company on East Vandergrip off I-35 in Carrollton. TFNB Your Bank for Life is the official local bank of Baylor Athletics. Find out why more Central Texans are making TFNB their bank for life. Sign up for our Edge Checking and Savings accounts to earn interest or cash back. With five convenient locations and an award-winning mobile app, banking has never been easier. TFNB, your bank for life. Member FDIC. Shorty's Pizza Shack at 12th and Bagby is a homegrown, locally owned pizza place that's out of this world. Everything from the dough, the sauce, the sausage topping is made fresh in-house. Not to mention the amazing pizza pillows, the chicken wings are to die for. Try the Sikkim sauce, chili cheese fries or tots, plus great specials on food and drink every single day. Shorty's is also the perfect spot to watch the game with your friends. Shorty's Pizza Shack at 12th and Bagby. Tell them Paul sent you by. Boozers is the wedding ring store and more. If you're ready to get engaged or already married and want to upgrade your wife's ring for a special anniversary, Boozers is the place to go. With the largest selection of premier quality diamond engagement rings and wedding rings in Central Texas. They have seven cases with over 300 styles of rings from top designers like Natalie Kay. Choose from yellow, white, or rose gold, plus beautiful top quality loose diamonds. With an in-house jewelry, they can also custom make anything you want. Bring in a picture or drawing and let Boozers create your one-of-a-kind pendant or ring. They can even use some of your old gold and diamond jewelry to create something new. At Boozers, you'll find a great selection of quality timepieces, and Boozers is the place for expert watch maintenance and repairs, too. They specialize in expert Rolex watch repair for fine jewelry, watches, custom work, and more. Go to Boozers on Valley Mills and Lake Air Drive in Waco. Boozers, the wedding ring store. This is Paul Catalina's top five at 545, or is it 555? 
Either way, it's the top five. Top five SEC quarterbacks. Yesterday we did Big 12. Today we're doing SEC. Monday we'll do ACC, which actually might be the easiest one to do because they've got the most returning guys. Uh, Garrett and I will have a long debate over who is number one in that. And I, I will be willing to see it, but he's going to have to come with uh, – with evidence but Garrett did help me out with this today the SEC is interesting because when we went to the Big 12 yesterday it was more of like you know putting somebody like you had six that you knew for for sure and then others that weren't coming back the SEC is in a lot of flux I mean the two best teams year in and year out Alabama and Georgia are are both in you know uh, competitions right now so we don't know who that person's going to be so to put them on this list i can't do that yet now i'm fully willing to amend this later on if we're on december 1st oh, no, this and is one, prediction the, time. one of those dudes you know who, but i don't know who it's going to be all it's, right well one thing craig saved you yesterday from getting hammered by texas tech fans by bringing up tyler shuck yeah well and look i i tyler shuck uh, confirm was on the list for it, a minute that was my fault probably i i said because i wasn't sure what did Morton. you talk him off I the did. list because I know some people want Morton to be the guy, and I wasn't certain. There's certain injuries in place, but yeah. So there's a lot of Tech fans today who are watching this because of the Grant McCaslin news. So you better. Yeah, I might have upset yourself. them. Yeah. yeah. So um, I will tell you that the the guys that did not make this list are KJ Jefferson, did not make the list, and there we we talked about it quite a bit, and. Um, and Spencer Rattler did not make the list. What? Yes, Spencer Rattler did not make the list. So was anyone playing quarterback better than him at the end of the year? Well, but like I'm, I'm kind of like, and I know they're they're gonna. I we debated it. It's I'll get to it. Number five, Spencer Sanders. More skins on the wall than most in the SEC coming back right now. Uh, and if he's healthy and does in fact win that job at Ole Miss, which I see no reason why he wouldn't, uh, then he's going to be one of the better uh, quarterbacks in the league. But again, for him, it's about health and consistency and and doing that over the over the long haul, another season in a row. Last year he wasn't healthy, and now he's in a new spot. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm going over in my head. Um, I mean, yeah, uh, he's he's got experience, but I mean, like you, I think that the big thing that you said though is if he wins that job, like he might not even win the job at Ole, at Ole Miss. Uh, that's still to be determined. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a fantastic athlete when he's at his best. But I don't feel like we've seen that in a really long time um, because of injuries, because of whatever is going on with Gundy and just fits there. Clearly, there was you know something to miss in Stillwater. Uh, last year, whether it was health or otherwise, given the mass exodus of players, um, so okay, yeah, that's that's interesting. I mean, I, like he's he's maybe not the starter, but I would think that he's probably got the upper hand. I don't I don't know that, but I would assume that. Yeah, number four, and this the bottom part of the list is what I think is the most controversial. Joe Milton, uh, look, he's got experience. He's been a starter. He's been not a starter. Uh, he he. Didn't win the job at Tennessee over Hendon Hooker, and Hendon Hooker turned out to be really good and, and might be kind of hitting his his stride right now as he heads into the NFL. Hopefully he can get healthy quickly and we can see what kind of NFL quarterback he can be. But this guy has a cannon that is unrivaled, and I think that in the offense that he's going to be in will be ridiculously effective uh, and be a nice bridge before they get to Nico Imaliava uh, there in Knoxville. Uh, but also, again... You know, debating these two guys and Spencer Rattler was was kind of tough, but I, I think I went maybe because I was really impressed with his win over Clemson, maybe more than Spencer Rattler's win over Clemson. I don't know, but I went with Joe Milton here. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of hope for him. His dude's got a cannon. That's for Dag, I'm sure. He's got some intangibles, and obviously there's huge expectations with Hen and Hooker, but it does seem like it's probably going to be a Baylor situation where just plug in a quarterback, and as long as they're pretty good, then they'll – thrive um mm -hmm. in that offense um so yeah I, I see why there's a lot of anticipation for him and uh we, we know waiting his time after georgia tech to to get this opportunity and, and be the guy i think that yeah that'll be a fun storyline to watch he was in michigan right yeah got a gun right yeah the issue was can he hit the target and i i like what i saw when i saw him playing yeah absolutely number three will rogers at mississippi state um you know obviously in that offense put up a, a ton of yards but 
uh, you know, maybe kind of falls below the radar a lot of this because, again, that's not the glitz and glam program. And we'll see, um, you know, what Mississippi State looks like this year after the passing of Coach Leach. But uh, I, I really do enjoy Will Rogers, and he, he runs that offense very, very effectively and is pretty dangerous in it. Yeah, you should correct me. I don't know why I said Georgia Tech. Michigan is where he was yeah. before. Just correct me if you I'm know, wrong on something Joe like Milton that. does sound a lot like Didn't Joe Hamilton. No, he, that's yeah. who I was thinking oh, of. Yeah. Joe Hamilton. Um, who yeah, just correct me I this like time. Joe but, yeah, Hamilton. that's who I was yeah. thinking of was Joe Hamilton. But, yeah, obviously was at Michigan. So, yeah, forget what I said. Where's yeah. Jackson Dart? Jackson Dart's at Ole Miss. Okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I, I had to take him off this list because Somebody asked, like I said, Lincoln. Spencer yeah. Sanders hasn't won that job yet. But Yeah, but, look, they went out and got two quarterbacks. That yeah, could beat out Jackson good. Dart. And, I mean, it tells me what – like, if the co coach isn't comfortable enough with that, then I, I'm not going to put him on my list either. Um, number two – Why can't they both be in the top five? Because I don't All know right. who the starters will be. Number two, Jaden Daniels at LSU. Well, Garrett tried to make him one. Number we, one in my heart. <laughs> yeah. But, no, we had – Garrett was reasonable about this. We, we talked about it. We did. We talked about it. But the way that he elevated that offense last year, when – at first, early on, it looked like the only play that offense had was third and long, everybody's dropping back, and Daniels is fast enough to get 17 yards on third and 16. But it was so much more than that. Once they had some cohesiveness and some chemistry, he really started doing a lot of things and made everybody around him better, which, which is what the value of a starting quarterback is. And another year in that system under his belt, where now it won't be like, let's just throw it to the wall and see what sticks. I think Jane Daniels is going to be fantastic um, this year for LSU. And the sky's the limit. I can't wait for that first game where he goes 0-1, but it'll still be fun mm -hmm. to, to, see, to see how it goes down. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that's as good of a game as it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I thought he got extremely better uh, as the season went along and got way more comfortable and became way more of just a, a – playmaker um you know he he fit in nicely and, and really evolved as the year went on and, and had a great uh, had a great season so yeah I think there's you know a lot of optimism in Baton Rouge because they got off to a quicker start than they probably anticipated and uh, now here's some expectations because you did get off to that start that you know you weren't necessarily expecting right away so uh certainly he plays a big part in that if not the biggest part in that and yeah it was fun watching him get better all right so I'm interested here. A lot of people are waiting for this one. You might have a landslide of negativity. Who's uh, number one? one? Yeah. Devin Leary. Devin Leary's number yeah. one. Yeah. This is, this is, I know he hasn't played at Kentucky yet, but he was probably the best quarterback in the ACC going into last year. Uh, then if he had the injury, uh, NC State uh, is an offense that's not really going to showcase. Um, you know, maybe all that you can do as a quarterback, but Devin Leary is that like he is out of the catalog. You know, if you were picking prototype quarterback, he is really, really good. I think the Kentucky offense will be better for him to show kind of maybe what what his full skill set is. Um, I think he, I would, I actually would have graded him better than B Will Levis last year, and that guy could wind up being a top five pick uh, this year and is going to be a first-round pick so no matter what. So who's better? You said who's better than Levis? Is he better than Levis, you think? I think he's better okay. than Levis. All and right. so I think this is going to be really good for Mark Stoops and, and Kentucky to get Devin Leary. I think Brennan Armstrong going from Virginia to take his place at NC State is going to be good for Brennan Armstrong. But um, ultimately, I think Devin Leary here made a good decision to kind of you know spread his wings, go against – you know, the SEC competition, uh, being an offense that maybe is a, a little bit more equipped to his skills. Dave Doran's doing a great job at NC State, but they are a team that runs on more efficiency than anything. Like, that's the impressive thing about NC State. You watch them, they're just efficient. I wouldn't call them prolific week to week, but efficient, you don't always have to be prolific. Efficiency's great. And that's what D Dave Doran uh, does there at NC State. So, P Devin Duke, Leary, number one. P. Duke, 68, nailed it. He said, you're going to pick Devin Leary. So, and mm -hmm. you did. That was before you said it yeah I mean there, there's a lot of hope for him and uh, obviously he's a highly coveted transfer and you love the offense that they run there for quarterbacks um, so there's a lot of reasons to believe that should work out really well how high does it take the Wildcats you know uh, clearly that's it's a tough task given what their surroundings are you know you could be really stinking good and still have three or four losses on your plate because of just who you're playing um, and that that is the reality of you know, the SEC and the depth. But, uh, I mean, that gives Kentucky a great leg up and uh, makes what could have been like a, you know, a rebuilding type year because you're, 
In the old days, you're having to go with a freshman, you know, a guy who'd been in waiting and all that, and this you just go straight to Devin Leary. That's a that's a nice little solution to any problems, and that's the magic of the transfer portal right there. So yeah, Kentucky loses a guy who's going to be hearing his name called pretty early in the draft, and, and gets a guy who. I don't know, and all of a sudden, might get his name called even earlier in the draft, depending on how the next, you know, wave of quarterbacks uh, performs. But, yeah, he makes them exciting for sure. All right, the women's Final Four about to tip off. The men tomorrow, and then, of course, championship for the women Sunday. The men's on Monday night. We'll have a lot to get into with that. Jimmy Walker, former Baylor golfer, is at the Valero Texas Open. He's uh, four under par, I believe. He's tied for 16th, actually three under par. He doesn't play a lot. He has not played a lot. Of course, he went through that Lyme disease, and it kind of sidetracked his career. Emery Winter, thank you. For the 29,000-plus subscribers, thank you. Our sponsors, thank you. And Kim Coulter's already made an order, placed an order for TexasBeefHouse.com. Garrett Ross, happy because you have Jaden Daniels. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, we appreciate you. Tonight, 1030 CW Channel, Sports Tonight. Good night. Have a great weekend. I'm David Smoke.